say, can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we hailed at the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight o'er the ramparts we so gallantly streaming, and the rockets heard them, the bombs bursting in air, it proved through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say. Oh, you got it? Oh, okay. Sorry about that. Sorry, everyone. Uh, r rough start, but we'll, uh, we'll improve. Welcome in, everybody. Thank you so much for being here for Faulkner's big playoff game in League of Legends against the Vermont Tech Knights. So we're going to be watching that this evening. I am, of course, am your host, Caleb Cockwit, and I'm here with my broadcast partner, Andrew Greet. Welcome in. Hi. Yeah, thank you for being here. What are you uh, expecting to see out of this match? What are you hoping to see from Faulkner? Um, hopefully uh, we can uh, get a good early game in uh, so that we can set up. Uh, uh, really get to a steamroll uh, against the team. Yeah, and, and Andrew really knows what he's talking about. He's actually one of the alts for League of Legends, so he's going to be our guest commentator this evening. We're really looking forward to that, and thank you so much for uh, being willing to step up and, and do that on short notice. He was uh, running into the arena right before the game started, yeah. but we appreciate you being able to do that and, and be generous with your time. So we've got a great matchup this evening. Let's go ahead and introduce our players. And you'll see there to start out, we have on the far right, that is Mr. One Shot. That's Daniel Wentz. He's the captain of the team. Then next to him is Frisbee Meniscus, I think is how to say it. I have no idea, but we're going to go with that one. Is that how you say it? Yep. Okay. Yeah, um, Andrew's actually Charlie's brother, so uh, that's Charlie Greet. And then Methodical Melody is next to him. That's Steven Patterson. Uh, he's also going to uh, be on the team this evening. Usually he does bottom lane. Uh, on the other side of the arena, we have Mr. Gunk on the far left there. That's Zane Thrash. And then next to him on PC5 is Raptor Claw. That's Ethan Dixon. So we've got everybody here tonight. They are revved up and ready to go for this playoff game. And a reminder to the audience that if we do actually advance tonight if we win this game we are in the championship which means that in two weeks on tuesday night i believe that's november the 29th is when that game is scheduled faulkner will be playing in its very first year of having a team for the championship so we certainly are hoping for a victory tonight that's certainly something that gets everybody excited and uh, there's been a lot of support for the league of legends team because of that yeah they've been doing pretty good yeah, they've been doing very well, and uh, we certainly look forward to seeing how they do in the future. And uh, one of the things that I didn't know that I actually looked up since our last broadcast is we were playing New Haven, for those of you who may remember our last game, and New Haven was actually ranked very high. They were ranked number one in their conference and had only lost one game all season, and so the fact that the Eagles were able to emerge victorious over the Chargers was quite impressive. Yeah, that was pretty surprising. Yeah, they uh, they did take a, a loss, and actually it was just what you were talking about in the earlier game. They got behind early on and were not able to catch up in the first one that they lost, but then they were able to come back and win the last two. And so uh, did very, very well. Or sorry, no, I, I reversed that. 
they won the first one, they got behind in the second one, and then they came back and won the third one. So did very, very well and uh, played a very talented team. So it looks like we've got the loadout is uh, counting down now. So we will be getting underway here in just a few minutes. Um, they are doing their picks right now. So let's go ahead and switch to the game screen where they're doing the picking. All right. Uh, it looks like the, um, the other team is going to start out with as blue. So we're actually going to have the Vermont Knights, sorry, Vermont Tech Knights going to be on blue side first. And they're doing their bands right now. Now, Andrew, you're going to have to help me because I have not quite learned all 140 characters in oh, League of Legends. I. Yeah, but you know, you know more than I do. Yeah, so definitely. Um, is that a Garen that they've banned yep. on that side? And then who else? Um, Mordecai. Oh, yeah, that's they picked Mordekaiser, yeah, they so that'll Mordekaiser. be their first one. Um, and then Nar will be played by I'm not sure which one, but. One of our players. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I think it was Raptor Claw. You think that was Raptor Claw? Or, no, Raptor Claw goes Sejuani. Oh, yeah, no, I was going to say that. I, w I was pretty sure that was Ethan. Okay. I don't know who would have picked Nar. Is it Nar usually a bottom laner? Um, I guess so. So probably either Charlie or... Um, oh, yeah, or, I uh, see that on Charlie's screen. Oh, is it? Yeah. I was going to say, it's probably either him or Melody. And uh, it looks like we've got Graves and Oriana on the other side. So all of Faulkner's bands are in. And it looks like we banned, uh, I believe that's Misfortune. It's hard to see. We have a very tiny screen Which here. Which one? Uh, is, is that Misfortune right there? No, I think that's either Katarina or the, probably Katarina. Oh, maybe so. Yeah, she's... Oh, I know. yeah, we, we picked Sivir. Uh, so, yeah, that's Katarina. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Leona, apparently, is uh, one of the other ones. That's typically your top laner, if I'm not mistaken. So, McLeod will be playing as her, I would assume. But it could also be a support. Uh, Leona is a very good tank support. Um, if they're having a squishy DPS uh, or uh, bottom laner, uh, then uh, Leona can uh, really help protect that uh, bottom laner from dying, mm -hmm. uh, especially in the early game. It's really important. And they've also got Tristana, which I would assume is their jungler. Mm -hmm. Typically, that's how that goes. Yeah. So, so we should be getting underway here in a second, and uh, when the loadout starts, we'll just figure out where we're going, because of course there is a three minute delay, so there are going to be things going on in the arena that we're, we're reacting to, so yeah, you can go ahead and switch back to us now, Logan. But yeah, so this is going to be a fun matchup this evening. I'm really looking forward to seeing how the guys handle it. Uh, based on what we've seen in the past, uh, Ver uh, Vermont Tech, I mean, they've already advanced to the semifinal round. They were not one that played in our league, which means that we've never faced this team before. This is going to be a completely new team for us to face, and it'll be interesting to see how the guys adapt. Uh, it has been also kind of interesting that all of the... Uh, things that have happened so far, all of the teams that we've played, it's just happened to be guys that were not in our league. There were guys in our league that were in the playoff bracket. It just ha so happens that none of them were against us. So every game we've played so far has been a completely new team for us, and this Faulkner team has done a very good job of adapting and being able to handle that. Yeah, I'm really proud of our players here. For sure, for sure. So uh, out of this group, when, because you've you've seen them practice quite a bit, mm -hmm. you know the team pretty well. Uh, typically, our strength tends to be, at least based on what I've seen, bottom lane and mid lane. Definitely. Uh, yeah. Uh, 
usually Charlie and who's the support again? Uh, generally, Methodical Melody is your, yeah. your bottom lane support. They usually make a pretty good team, uh, and especially since they're uh, two of the most experienced players. Uh, they, mm -hmm. They're usually the ones uh, pushing through and uh, really helping our team get ahead. Yeah, and that's the thing, too. That's kind of a special relationship. It's sort of like how in baseball, all of the guys are on the same team, but the, the pitchers and the catchers have to have kind of a closer yeah. relationship than the rest of the team just because they work together so much. Bottom lane's kind of like that in League of Legends, that your bottom lane guys have to work together more so than anybody else on the map. Uh, of course, there's team fights and everybody works together to a degree, but having a good combo on your bottom lane to run support and main bottom uh, that's going to be a really important uh, relationship between the two of them. And luckily, these guys who did not know each other from Adam when the semester started have been able to coalesce and, and form a pretty good working relationship. Yeah, it's really impressive. So I'm looking forward to seeing how that goes. Now, they are actually uh, already underway over there in the arena, but we'll get you to the feet of that as soon as the uh, the timer has run up. We're about 30 seconds from that. Um, Man, now would be a really good time to run an ad. So if you are interested in being a sponsor for Faulkner Esports for the League of Legends team, you can certainly do that. We were actually talking about a certain group. I won't mention their name because they have not had that deal go through yet, but they mentioned being interested in sponsoring one of our games. So we may have them for League of Legends for next season. I'm trying to get our sponsors lined up for there. All right, so we're about to get started here. The timer just ran up, so we should be loading up the screen in just a second. And we will cut to that as soon as we get the feed up. Any second now. Okay, there we go. Yeah. So we can go ahead and uh, this is going to be the characters that we're playing. Oh, I like that uh, Methodical Melody is going to be running his uh, pizza skin. <laughs> That's uh, mm -hmm. always a fun one. All right. So the teams are getting set. Faulkner, of course, on the top right-hand corner for this one. Yeah, so that uh, that actually needs to be reversed there, Logan. There we go. Awesome. So, Logan, this is his first time doing League of Legends, and uh, really, I appreciate him and, and all the guys, because we have gone from everyone having zero experience this semester since it was our first one, to everybody really getting on board and being able to... Uh, do an excellent job with the production. I mean, I know we've had some technical difficulties and some glitches here and there, but I mean, overall, I'm very proud of the way that the team's come together and put together a really solid production uh, team and commentary team. So it looks like the guys are just starting to get ready. They're kind of in that early game phase where they're sort of going through and uh, just getting their bearings, starting to get some stuff set up. Yep, uh, they should be. Well, they are uh, hanging around uh, river and jungle, uh, just getting ready to pick off anyone that tries to overextend. Doesn't look like anyone's doing that though, so... Pretty soon, uh, once the first jungle monsters uh, spawn in... <clears throat> yep, now... Uh, our bottom lane is helping the jungle out uh, by leashing the monster. Uh, pretty soon they should be going over to the bottom lane. Sorry. Uh, so obviously the strategy. Ah! on their farm. So here we've got one shot going at it. Is that slant? Uh, I believe so. Yeah. It's kind of a little print. Yeah. Pretty hard to read. It's alright. Uh. And McLeod here and Loka is struggling a little bit, or just, I don't know, it doesn't seem like they have a lot of direction here. Mm -hmm. Just kind of letting their minions do the fighting, which is not, you know, a terrible idea. Save their HP for sure. 
Looks like Mr. Gunk is uh, doing pretty nice in top lane. He's pushing in that Mordekaiser pretty hard. Mm -hmm. Being a Bible major, Mordekaiser is, is kind of funny because it's like a very obvious play off of a Bible name, Mordecai. Mm. But. And Raptor Claw, our jungler, taking down another one of the beasts. Yeah, he got our red buff, I believe. Yeah, Faulkner pretty neck and neck with these guys right now. Vermont Tech and Faulkner, really, all they've done so far is farm for resources, and they've more or less been even this whole time. Oh, and Raptor Claw oh. going after their jungler here in a little That's bit a of a team nice fight. Gank. Yeah. Uh, Gunk with the gank. But it looks like they're going to get away. Yeah. Still, puts them in a not so great position. Mm -hmm. they, got a, they got a pretty good stun off with uh, soft art us from chasing them too far. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Boy, getting me whiplash switching back yeah. between these two. And I understand why. They're both pretty exciting fights, but at the same time. Mm -hmm. All right, so Mr. Gunk getting the better of Shred. We'll just call him Shred. Shred, yeah. Yeah. <coughs> Thankfully, he didn't dive too far. That tower would have got him pretty yeah. hard. You don't. Sure. That was some pretty nice dodging on Mr. Gunk's part. Yeah, Tread and Gunk really kind of staying even on the HP count. Mm -hmm. And that's mostly just because Gunk is doing a better job of dodging than he is. Because he doesn't have the damage that it does. And pizza's flying everywhere. Yep, looks like bottom lane is pushing them into the tower. Yep. Uh, back to the top lane. Looks like they're both doing pretty alright up there. Uh, Mr. Gunk does have more mana than Fred does. So. Yeah, and I think a lot of that has to do with, based on the way that they're playing it, they're both kind of going cautiously. Looks like Faulkner's going to make a play to take the dragon here, and they yeah. do. That was really good for us. We got the first Drake, or Dragon. There's very little there. And it looks like Gunk may get our first kick. Oh boy. And that was nice. Alright, so Wampus Kitty with the uh, first kill there. Mm -hmm. Hopefully Mr. Gunk can just put some damage on that tower. While his uh, opponent is respawning. Down. Yeah. Well, they're pushing our bottom lane in a bit. Uh, like, Frisbee is waiting in the bushes for an ambush. He got a nice poke off. He was taking care of their ward. Yeah, Raptor is going around taking out all the enemy ward. That's gonna uh, take down a lot of their uh, field of view. E. And really, too. Jungler usually is the tiebreaker in a lot of fights, mm -hmm. um, but also has the duty of making sure that the jungle is relatively free of wards so that the enemy team doesn't see too much of that, the battlefield. So what we've seen there is Faulkner winds up getting the kill on the Beast and getting the kill on, uh, on Vermont Tech, but unfortunately a couple of Vermont Techs other players showed up and kind of got the better of us there. Came out on that fight like I... Mm-hmm. Won, won, won ourselves and got the beat. Yep. 
That's a trade I'll make every day and twice on Sunday. <laughs> Like Mr. Gunk is wearing down Mordekaiser pretty good. Hopefully, Mordekaiser pips up a bit more so that he can secure enough kill on him. Yeah, nice to have a couple. <laughs> he man just on the tank, you know? It's more impressive when it happens to the tank. Yeah. Wasn't for that gank, he might have made some serious ground. Yeah, but he's already done a pretty good job on top lane, yeah. so he's he's had very little pressure on his own tower and put a lot on the enemy teams. Yeah. So looks like Mr. Gunk might uh, end up giving us a lot of headway in this fight. I hope so. I would love to see top lane open up and maybe. Ooh, that was nice. Oh, here we go. We might get a kill here. Yes. Ooh. That was great. Shred has been taken down. Unfortunately, their jungler is coming in to take up the flag. Yep. I forget that character's name, but the uh, the Wampus Kitty form has been really getting the better of him. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it looks like Mr. Gunk may want to cut his losses and get out of there at mm. this point because he's been weakened by the previous fight and doesn't really want to get into a fight that results in him being at a disadvantage against the jungler. That's yeah, right. Now Mr. One Shot is taking care of the enemy ward from River. You know, this really does display, though, why it's so important that this is thought of as a team event because mm. if the jungler has to go and assist with top lane, he may stop the top laner's advance, but that also means that our jungler is free to do pretty much whatever he wants in the jungle, and so that's why this, uh, you know, really emphasizes the team aspect of it. Of course, there in bottom lane, actually, uh, Vermont Tech catches up with us on kills. We're still ahead of them on gold, uh, but actually winds up evening the score up with team kills. Yeah, unfortunately, they managed to catch us. Looks like Mr. Gunk pushing things in again. Yeah, Zane having an excellent game this round. Mm -hmm. Let's hope he keep it up. Yeah, you and me both. <laughs> Man, Fred is not getting any hit off on him. That's great. Looks like our mid laner is creating. Their mid laner is back at. Do an upgrade or two. Like Rep Claws clearing out the boards in preparation for taking a break. Get him. Like, oh, nope. No. He was just too close to that uh, tower. Mm -hmm. If it hadn't been for the tower, he probably would have won that matchup. Yep, that was close. But Vermont Tech quickly has taken the lead on kills. Yep. And it looks like they're going for a dragon right now as well, so that could be uh, it could be that they're making a little bit of a rally. Faulkner did take that early lead, which you were talking about, but now they've started to catch up on both kills and gold. That's the game. And they get the second dragon. Back head. One can hope. Oh, was Rapid Claw in a fight back there? I thought I saw him. Oh. He was taking the red buff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I missed that because it just cut to it real quick and then cut away, and I couldn't see it. I didn't get a chance to see who he was fighting. Mm. The Mr. One Shot doing a good job of sort of keeping these minions at arm's length. Oh, and it looks like he's about to get ganked. Yeah. So he doesn't get the kill, but he does get the shutdown. Luckily, there were 
basically all the minions have been taken out at that point, though I don't think getting the shutdown is going to cost him too much. Really cleaning up with that long range multiple hit, and they've summoned the Rift Beast. Yep, hopefully that'll get us some good headway. Here we go. All right, that I think that took a plate, didn't it? Yep. All right, so. It's a shame, looks like they're planning us up. Yep. We wrap the clock and get out of there. Yeah, didn't get a kill off of it, but did take a plate off of the tower, which gives us a little bit of an advantage on gold. Mm-hmm. Mr. Bonchow was getting good hit uh, damage on that tower there. Mm-hmm. Hopefully oh, Mr. Dunk can take out more Kaiser at the end. Let's hope, though. And one of our towers has just lost its last plate, though. It is now a lot more vulnerable on mid lane. Mr. One Shot and Alan are having a small skirmish over the board from the river. Here are the end of the ward. Vision. Um, left the enemy on the sliver of hell. Oh no, yeah, he did get him. They killed each other. Yep. Mutually assured destruction. And now Vermont Tech going after the golem. Oh dear. Hopefully Gun can help in this out here. Oh, oh, this isn't good. Get out of there, Frisbee. Nope. But it does cost him his life, so Oh, Miss Gun can Oh no, Gun would come up. So now Gunk is in his beast form, so doing a lot more damage. Bottom laner. The tank. No, is that support? Yeah, that's the Iona. I think, yeah, I think that's yeah. support. Yeah, so they've decided not really worth the effort on both sides, and they just kind of call it quits. Like either another Rift Herald Baron Nash or Sonic. Catch it as soon as possible. Yeah, hopefully. Harold coming in. is playing up the uh, wards and jungle around Rift Herald. Yeah, they're just kind of getting ready for making that big push here with both teams playing very even mm -hmm. on everything except for kills, which I think the fact that we're pretty much even on gold, despite the fact that they have several more kills than us, is sort of an indication of how well our jungler has been doing. Oh well, yeah, it's, he's definitely doing great. And that's the thing, sometimes with the jungler you don't see behind the scenes what's going on there. That they're just kind of quietly... Oh, looks like they're going to get the Rift Herald, unfortunately. Unless Mr. Young can come and get it. Yeah, Soon it looks enough. like Raptor Paul is running for his life here. No, no, looks like he got the Rift Herald. Yep. Looks 
like they're covering mid lane uh, pretty hard. Yeah, I don't know if that may be part of the reason that Gunk has had so much success on top lane is because that's just not their focus, but it looks like he's about to take a tower. Mm -hmm. Alright, and up goes the Rift Herald. Red Looks like they've got our mid lane tower. Mm -hmm. And off to our first bot lane tower. Alright, Raptor Claw in a little bit of trouble here. He's getting attacked from all sides. Our team is trying to help, but they're too spread out right now. Whereas their team was sort of unified, able to make a more focused push. Yeah. Looks like Gung finally cured the top tower. Gets the tower and looks like he's about to get the kill as well. Yeah, that's great. And down he goes. Gunk has been the really the MVP of this match so far. Yeah, he's been doing great for himself. Look at there goes the rest of our team. Going to use the uh, the boom tube there. Forgive me for the DC vernacular. And Angelic takes down one of the big monsters. So Lum trying to take Gunk's monster, but Gunk is having none of it. Actually, Gunk was, uh, Hiding in wait, right in front of their blue buff monster. Uh, Alum just, you know, came through, collected. it. Yeah, but he was able to get him to back off enough to where the HP reset, mm -hmm. which was nice. That was some good stalling. over uh, who gets to attack Baron Nasher first. Hopefully we can clear him out of there. Yeah, the Baron would definitely go a long way, especially now that Faulkner has gone behind a little bit in the kill count. Being able to use Baron to buff the minions would be a nice little boost for them, but we will see if they can pull that off, they certainly want it. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, their enemy jungle, or, or, the enemy jungler has a zombie ward, which lets him uh, decimate a lot of our wards and replace them with his own. Uh, that's doing pretty bad for us, uh, trying to secure Aaron Nasher. Mr. Gunk is doing his part, though. And it looks like Frisbee is trying to clear the area before they go in for that. Mm -hmm. Alright, everybody chasing Raptor Claw there. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to clear us all out so that they can take the new Drake. And unfortunately, it looks like Raptor didn't, isn't getting out of this. Yeah, Raptor was trying to kite there, sort of bring everybody to where his team would be, but unfortunately not everybody was there in time. Mm -hmm. That's a shame, too, because it looks like, at least right now, the team battle... It looks like they've decided to um, spread
spread their XP out more evenly, whereas we've decided to feed our top and mid lane specifically. So our jungler being able to get back to our our top and mid would have done much better. Oh, Although methodical melody does get the kill there. Can't uh Melody managed to kill the Mordekaiser even while he was using his ult, which is pretty uh, impressive feat. Yep. And it looks like now, if everything goes well, and here comes Raptor Claw, we'll be able to take the strike pretty quickly. Mm -hmm. There we go. Yep. Nice. Got that without the steel. Yeah, that was cool. So, Faulkner had fallen a little bit behind, but they've quickly caught up, and now we're pretty much in a dead heat and actually have the advantage in gold. Yeah. And the advantage in the amount of drakes they've been able to slay so far. Mm-hmm. Like a pretty tight game so far. All right, and... Raptor Claw about to take the golem. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Mr. Gunk is cleaning up that Mordekaiser again. Yeah, and oh, wow. makes quick work of him. Sure does. Come on. Seal the deal. Oh, oh, he's lost his more powerful form. It'll take him a little longer, but he still gets the kill. Dang, that was... Yeah, that was great. Unfortunately, they pushed us all uh, up to our last uh, turret and uh, mid lane and bottom lane. Yeah, so they've kind of been letting top lane go in favor of getting mid lane and bottom lane. And if you could pick any lane, mid would probably be the one to have. Because while you're going to get the least amount of gold taking mid lane, you also have the most direct path to their base, and that's how you win. Mm -hmm. No one's taken Baron Nasher yet. Mostly just been kind of a war of wards being placed around it. We're saying that five times fast. Uh, I don't wanna. Especially not when you're broadcasting. Yep. Don't want to embarrass yourself. No, uh, looks like. Uh, oh, and they take down Frisbee. Yeah, Meniscus got ganked pretty hard there. Yeah, well, when it's a 3v1, there's not a whole lot you can do. Mm hmm. And they go for the Baron. And gunk still here. Also. Luckily they... He, dang, he pulled him away long enough for Dasher to regen all its health. That was pretty great. Yep. And now they're going to be kind of on their heels. Mm-hmm. Yet they opt not to go for the Baron themselves. Yeah, they managed to bring it back to a stalemate on it. As long as they can keep the enemy team from getting Baron Asher, uh, they'll probably be able to win with the long game. Yeah, and that's the thing, especially with a game that's so strategy-based like this, sometimes it's more important to force your enemy to do something that they don't want to do than it is for you to actually do something positive for your own team, so it depends on how you look at it. All right, and a double kill. Yeah, that was nice. By Methodical Melody. Just barely managed to get out of there. Yep. And go to cause some trouble. They go for the Baron. Mm -hmm. Frisbee on his last leg there, but tries to help out where he can. Yeah. Wow. We 
got it. Nice. That's gonna be great for us. Uh, our minions are gonna be a lot more powerful, and that's definitely gonna help push them all the way to their base. Yeah, we managed to keep the tower game fairly even, but with the boosted minions, that's going to go a long way in making sure that we get a little bit long, especially in mid and bottom where we've struggled so far a little bit. Yeah, we're even in kills, mm -hmm. and we have more gold than them. That might have just secured us the game. Could be. Yeah, of course. It's looking good for the Eagles. We're all gathering down at Drake. The heck deck Drake spawned again. Mr. Gunk making sure the enemy team stays keeps their hands off of it. And that's another secured Drake. Nice job by the Eagles. Yeah. A team fight going on and Faulkner outnumbered. Oh, but it, here comes the cavalry. Oh, wow, that Mordekaiser is getting grounded pretty hard. You know, I think that that is sort of a testament because, of course, Gunk did wind up getting killed there, but that's a testament to how well he's been doing this round because you'll notice that it took basically the entire team to bring him down. Mm -hmm. He's been getting fed like crazy. Shot just got our blue buff. And we're just about to take their first mid tower down. Yep, it's down. Well, there you go. And it looks like they're going to get into a team fight here again. Mm -hmm. That looks like it. Did it give us the advantage in power? No, it looks like it's pretty even now. No, we do have one. One more than them. Oh, yeah. yeah. And the two first. now. We just took another. Blue turret destroyed. Oh, yeah, that's awesome. All right, and Mr. One-Shot is dominating. like to see that. Sure do. Looks like we're going to be able to take this turret. Yeah, we're sweeping them pretty hard. Nice. Good job, guys. Taking down this inhibitor. Yep, now we got super minions spawning in. With the Baron Asher buff, that's going to be even better for us. We might even take Nectus right here. Yeah, I don't know if they have enough juice left in the tank to be able to do that, but yeah. making a very strong showing here. Uh, hopefully we can treat well enough. Yeah, Raptor Claw may need to get out of there. Oh. Mr. One Shot took one for the team, pulled the whole enemy team back, so we, we could push it uh, away. Fred trying to get the better of these guys, and he looks like he's caught Frisbee. Oh, dear. Come on, Gunk. Get, yep, takes down iCloud. Oh, that was great. Mr. Gunk managed to get a last-second kill, uh, yeah. keeping us out of draw with kills. Yeah, you, you hate to see him go down like that, but at the same time, it, it's much better to get a kill before retreating. Sometimes it's better to just go ahead and get that kill quickly so that it, it at least offsets as opposed to just trying to retreat and getting killed and not doing any damage. Mm -hmm. So, just a strategic win there. Yeah, unfortunately, it looks like they've gotten some time to uh, pull back ahead. Although, hopefully, we can uh, bring the wave back to their base. Yeah, I think so, but just based on me having watched several of the games this year, it seems like Daniel really likes to, after making that first big push, not go super aggressive right afterward. Now, that does give the enemy some time to recover, but it also gives you the advantage of being able to take some time to farm out there. Mm-hmm. 
uh, be be a little bit more prepared for when you actually do take the base. Looks like we're all gathering in top lane, uh, probably for a big push. Yep. Everybody's getting ready. Oh, do you uh -oh. Know what happened there? Uh, don't know. Did they surrender? Um, no. Uh, so this has happened before. Um, Logan, what you have to do is you have to pull it up. What it does is, I don't know why, but it minimizes it. There we go. Wait. Shut down. All right, there we are. All right, so we're back in the action now. Sorry about that, All guys. Right. Looks like Mr. One Shot is cleaning up pretty hard. And Raptor Claw. Looks like we just might push them all in. Yeah, I this think this like is going to be push. the big push. Uh-huh. We're going to win right here. There goes one inhibitor. Or, sorry, turret. And they're going for the inhibitor now. That goes down. And it looks like they're going to chase off one shot and Raptor Claw, but Gunk still with several minions and making a big push here at the bottom. And Gunk's going to step back here. Gonna head back to base and gonna recuperate, try to make a play here. And are they gonna try to take that great? No, doesn't look like it. No, we're already far ahead. Uh, we don't want to lower the health down enough for them to steal it. Right, don't want to give them an advantage. Well, nope, looks like they are going to go for it. Yeah, all right. Guess we're going to try to crush him. Well, you like to see the confidence, though. Yeah. You really do. And so what Mr. One-Shot here is doing is basically keeping them at bay while the team takes on the dragon. Doing a pretty good job of that. Yep. Almost able to single-handedly keep them at bay. Nice. You managed to get the dragon. So, prevented the steal and Methodical Melody got a kill there. Yep. So, Faulkner looking very good right now. Yeah, that was a Tyrus high reward uh, maneuver right there, but thanks to that, uh, we're probably able to crush him right here. Yep, and Mr. One Shot takes down the blue turret, and yep, they're looks going like it's for. a good game. Yep. That's game, guys. That was great. All right. Victory for the Eagles. A very well played game for injury. They did exactly what uh, you were talking about early lead. Being able to do that early on, and that gave them the advantage for later. Mm -hmm. So they just got that early lead, and even though they fell behind a couple times since then, that really set them up to be able to have success late in. Yeah, Mr. Gong pushing on that Mordekaiser really helped out. Yeah, so Gunk did an excellent job top laning that entire time, the MVP of that round. But then you also had several good uh, pushes from Mr. One Shot, who really was doing of keeping mid lane at bay despite the fact that they kept pushing it. So, really, sort of single handedly, with a little help from Raptor Claw every now and then coming in from the jungle to gank, uh, doing an excellent job of keeping the enemy. And our bottom lane struggled a little bit, but they were still able to keep them from taking that last tower, and so our defenses were strong pretty much the entire round. Yeah, that was real impressive on our part. So what do you expect the second round? Do you think that they'll make any adjustments here? Or what What if, if you were the other team, the Vermont Knights, what would you do differently? And then how does partner? Well, I'd say that they're probably going to try to uh, keep top lane a bit more well-kept. Um, yeah, it was pretty instrumental in their downfall this match, so, uh, they're gonna wanna, uh, make sure that their top laner isn't getting pushed as hard. 
You think they'll ban Gunk's champion? Because I definitely would after oh, that. Oh, yeah. That, that's... Whew. If they don't, that's gonna be... We, that, that'd be awkward. Uh, thrilled about that, though, if they don't. Same thing over again. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but they're gonna get set up for round two here in June. And that... them in the second round and remember that this is a best of three so if they win the next match that's ball game uh Faulkner will be going on to the championship round if they can win just one more match so hopefully that will come to fruition here in just a second but we having some trouble hmm that's bizarre okay yeah we're in sorry Having a little bit of a technical issue back here. Yeah, League's uh, client is just not the most intuitive, and so because of that, it can be a bit of a challenge. But it looks like we're ready to go. I'll tell you what we'll do since we've got a lull here in the action because we do have that delay. Let's go ahead and take a quick break and give us a chance to rest, and we'll hear from some of our great departments here on campus, and we'll be back in just a minute. Did you know that 100% of Faulkner's computer science graduates since 2014 have found jobs in their fields within six months of graduating? It's a great time to be a computer scientist. Everyone is walking around with a computer in their pocket in the form of a smartphone. And it takes software developers to make those things work. I built church websites and through the training and instruction that I received from Faulkner, I was able to go right into my career after graduation. It laid a solid foundation for what you need to know. I'm getting a lot of hands-on experience within my field and also they're just giving me a wide variety of options of things that I might want to pursue in the future. In the state of Alabama alone, there are over 4,000 tech-related jobs available. And the preparation that you receive at Faulkner University will allow you to go to work almost anywhere as a software developer. It's a great time to be a Faulkner Eagle, and it's a great time to be a computer scientist. I hope you'll come and join us. leaders for the river region and beyond. Faulkner University's Harris College of Business is distinctively different, focusing on ethics and character development in the classroom and building ethical foundations with our new Ethics Institute. Living the mission of Faulkner University to glorify God through education of the whole person, emphasizing integrity of character in a caring Christian environment where every individual matters every day. As a student at the Harris College of Business, I saw firsthand the mission of Faulkner University. My professors there not only taught me, but they also mentored me. They encouraged me, they cared for me, they instilled character and integrity into me. I mattered every day. That mission hasn't changed. 
Harris College of Business continues to provide its students with the tools they need to succeed in today's business world. Training tomorrow's teachers, ministers, and scientists. Guiding future business leaders to positively impact our global economy. Teaching healthcare professionals to improve patient outcomes. Coaching athletes to give their best on and off the field. Men and women learning how to succeed wherever their dreams take them. That's Faulkner University. With over 70 undergraduate and graduate degree programs, you'll find your calling all in a Christian learning environment. Faulkner University. Discover more at faulkner.edu. Welcome back, everybody. Thank you so much for being here with us for Faulkner's League of Legends playoff game. We are in the playoffs, and now Faulkner is only one match away from going to the championship game. So get excited, guys. The, uh, the fellows in there were asking for a pep talk afterward. I really don't think they need one. They seem pretty queued up. Uh, they're pretty, pretty ready to roll here. So I've been proud of them. They've been doing a good job. They're calm. They're feeling good, and they think that they can win this next match, and I agree with them. So... I don't think that they're like overconfident or just like feeling like it's going to, that they're going to sail to it, but they feel like they can win this next one and win it in two. And I, I happen to agree with them. Yeah. It looks like we're going for another win. Yeah. I'm certainly looking forward to it. We'll see where this goes. So they're going ahead and they're picking some of their bands for the next round. So we're just going to give them a little time to do that. And hopefully we will, this will be our last match up until uh, after Thanksgiving break. Because remember that if they do win here tonight, they go on to the championship game. And that game is going to be, I believe, November 29th, which is on Tuesday. And that's going to be at 6 p.m. against whoever is on the other side of that. In fact, why don't we go ahead and look up who our opponents are going to be. Because this game was originally scheduled for Saturday. But Daniel, our captain, couldn't come because, I don't know, something unimportant and not really all that big a deal was happening. Like, I think his brother was getting married and he was the best man or something lame like that. I don't know. But regardless, he couldn't come to the match. And so, thankfully, NACE, the National Association of Collegiate Esports, intervened and they said, yeah, we can go ahead and uh, give them a pass on that one. And they rescheduled the game for tonight, which we were... Very thankful to them and also grateful to the Vermont Tech Knights for being willing to work with us and reschedule this game. We appreciate them being sportsmen about it as far as that goes. So it looks like we'll be playing Seneca Esports, which actually we have played before. They We played them, I think, in our fifth game this year. So if we do go on to the championship game, we'll play a very good Seneca team who we've already faced once. So we will see how that goes. It looks like the guys are getting queued up here. Um, they're almost done. So what they're doing is they have this sort of third-party agent that helps them uh, queue up and pick their bands within a time limit, and they're going ahead and doing that now. So they should be getting underway here pretty quickly. Shouldn't take them too much longer. Are there any, on, on champions, or is there any specific one that you would be looking to to maybe counteract something that Vermont did in the last round? Is there any particular champion you might go with? Hmm. Well, uh, do you see anything particular Vermont did? So it seemed like, and it was sort of the thing that we were talking about earlier, Vermont had issue with the top lane, so I don't think that I would mess with that at all. I don't. They, they may ban the champion, so you may have to go with someone else, but they were banning uh, Garen, which to me says that they probably don't do well at handling really beefy... Um, tanks that are, are basically just tanks and don't really play support roles. So I think that they probably struggle with those a little bit. So top lane, I don't think in, in Faulkner's game I would change at all. Uh, the only thing I might change on bottom lane is I might try to pick a duo with a little bit better synergy or even one that had a little bit more aggression. Because it seemed like on bottom lane we were struggling to get enough raw attack power to be able to take down swaths of minions at the same time or to be able to take a tower, and sometimes it pays off, even if there's not a strategic reason for switching champions, to change it out just to throw the other team off. So they may want to do something like that to where they're not really changing their strategy up all that much. They're doing it and tweaking it just enough that they don't know exactly what to defend against. So you can get you know too nerdy about it. You can get too in your head about the strategy and overthink it and make mistakes like that, but 
I don't think that a little bit of adjustment here would be unmerited, but at the same time, they won that match pretty quickly, so I don't know that you have to adjust too much. I think you just play your game and, and do what you have to uh, and, and do what you have been doing because so far it's working. And since we now have one win under our belt, even if we try to do basically the same thing and it doesn't work out the next match, all we have to do is counterpick them in the third. So, yeah. um, well, like you said, uh, bottom line could do a bit better. So maybe they, uh, since the other team seems to be scared of tanks, we can go for a more tankier uh combo at least switch with a uh switch out for a more tanky support so mm -hmm. that the dps uh map bottom laner can go for a more maybe a more damage focused and squishy uh character uh so that the tank can cover for him while he manages to take uh push those minion waves a lot better yeah um one that I was thinking if they did want to go a more aggressive route, they might want to go with Caitlyn. Because I've seen this team working oh, with yeah. Caitlyn here recently, and I think Caitlyn might be a good pick for their bottom lane. I don't know if we'll see her or not. And uh, who would be a good matchup with that? Because typically, if it's Caitlyn, I, I guess it would be Charlie playing her, wouldn't it? Or no, sorry, Charlie plays support, yeah. Frisbee plays main. So he would probably be Caitlyn, who... Who do you Charlie think Charlie is frisbee? Melody, Melody plays. Yeah, I don't know why I said that. Uh, Melody plays uh, uh, plays main, and then Charlie plays uh, support most of the time. Mm -hmm. So, if you did have Caitlyn, who would you pick as support? Do you think? Because um, you bottom lane too, don't you? Yeah, I I'd pick a, a probably a more front line uh, support, maybe like Fiona or uh, I forgot. His, I think Rakan. Yeah, because Caitlyn likes to stay back a little bit yeah. because she has so much range ability. So maybe someone who can stay on the front lines and uh, help keep the enemy away from Caitlyn uh, would really help. I can see that. That might be a good pick. But we will see shortly. Oh, actually, it looks like they're going ahead and starting the picking process now. So they've already made a couple bands. And that's an interesting one. So I think that this is probably a wise strategy. We can go ahead and cut to that, by the way. Uh, I think this is going to be a wise strategy because you remember they banned Garen in the last game, and it looks like Mr. Gunk has picked Garen for this one, so he's going to be tanking Garen. It seems like that was one that uh, they don't do so well in, and you can see they actually did ban his tank from the last game. They saw how well he did on top lane and did not want to repeat of that. Mm -hmm. They traded out one baddie for another, never using the one that they banned before, so that's going to yep. be rough for them. And then it uh, looks like Ethan's going to be playing Volibear. Mm -hmm. And Mr. One-Shot's got Silas. They're playing Orn, which, honestly, Orn is one of my favorite top lanes. He's, he's really fun to watch. He's a really interesting tank that can play a lot of different roles, very versatile. And so it'll be fun to see how uh, Mr. Gunk does against him. I think that it'll probably be a pretty good matchup on that side. Mm-hmm. Although, I don't think I've ever seen Daniel play Silas. So that's a new one on me. Yeah, hopefully he manages to do well with him. I think he will. I've learned not to, uh, not to second-guess Daniel on too many things when it comes to League. Like, we're banning Katarina so that they, can, they can't use her. Yep. Oh, Jen. So, Jen's going to be an interesting one because Jen is one that this team actually knows very well because Steven plays her a decent amount. Mm, no boy. Speaking uh, of Steven, he decides to go with Severe again. Yeah, it looks like our bottom lane is going for the same configuration as last time. Well, unless Frisbee uses something else. Well, Raptor Claw did go with Volibear, though, so he is changing oh, it up a little. Frisbee's using Yumi. Um, Interesting. Well, you know, yeah. he did very well with Yumi in the last round against uh, New Haven. So, oh boy, that's got to be. I'm looking forward to that. It's funny that you mentioned Leona, and the enemy actually picks yeah. Leona. <laughs> uh, Yumi's a pretty unique support. Uh, she basically just piggyback with uh whoever she's helping out. Um, yeah, a lot of synergy there. Does very well with a range of different characters. Mm-hmm. And 
and it looks like Faulkner is going to be on the left side this time. So uh, we're going to be in the, the bottom left corner. Hopefully this is the last match up until the Thanksgiving holiday. That would be nice. Yep, I'm getting pretty tucked out. <laughs> it's going to be nice. Yeah, just as a student in general. Oh, yeah. Yeah, no, I get that. I'm actually a student, too. A lot of people don't realize that, but I'm a graduate student, so I know I know what it feels like. I've got a grad paper on judges i got to put together here real quick. Good luck on that. Thank you. It's actually pretty fascinating. A lot of people don't realize this, but judges is actually not written in chronological order. And so the purpose, yeah, so the purpose, and you can bring it back to us, uh, Logan. Uh, the purpose of my paper is going to be to try to arrange it in chrono uh, chronological order because Judges is written thematically. So it basically tells stories in the order in which there's a uh, increasing decline in Israel's moral quality. And so I'm going to try to see which ones happen in actual historic order. So that'll be a fun fun research paper. You got anything interesting going on in school for you? Um, not exactly, I would say. Uh, kind of just, uh, I am in the grade books program. Uh, we're coming up in the, for the creative essay. Mm -hmm. Um, that's where we basically have to write a, uh, Greek play, like, of our own, uh, in, in the same style as the Greek authors, so. So, like, uh, the Iliad, the Odyssey, that kind of thing? Um, more... I think so. Well, those are poetry, so they're not exactly plays, yeah, but not, sa same idea. Yeah, more of the... More like Oedipus Rex. Yeah, Oedipus Rex, okay. Agamemnon. Uh, Agamemnon is definitely one of my favorites. Um, but yeah, we're going to be writing our own plays, so... I've got a few ideas, but I'm not kind of not sure. Uh, hopefully, we've got a workshop this Thursday, so ho hopefully that can help me out. Well, good luck with that, Andrew. Hopefully Thanks. it all works out this semester. Mm -hmm. uh, Andrew, of course, is a freshman here, and if you would like to pr uh, pursue a education and go a little bit further with yours, you, of course, can come here and enroll as well. Enrollment is actually already open for this semester, so if you did want to come, you could come and sign up for classes. So uh, definitely something to look forward to. We have a great Bible program, and uh, this is something that they've been very excited for. The Zorn Scholarship is actually something they just released this year. And that means that if you come to Falk and you enroll as a Bible major, you get your tuition paid for in full. Now, you have to pay for your living expenses, meal plans, that kind of thing. But as far as tuition goes, if you decide to be a Bible major, your school gets paid for completely. So uh, that's something that Faulkner has just started offering this year. I actually meant to have that in one of our promos, but unfortunately, they haven't got that one done yet. So that'll probably be forthcoming in the next semester. But uh, certainly, we are looking forward to this match's conclusion, or what we hope is the conclusion. Uh, I mean, it's going to conclude one way or the other, but I'd rather it conclude in this match because that means Faulkner won. So we have about 15 seconds on the loadout, and we will be getting to that in just one second. Yeah, so the guys have actually uh, already started. So remember, we are on a three-minute delay, but we will bring you the action as soon as that loads up here. And that will be coming in just a moment. But seriously looking forward to seeing what the guys do here. And uh, I think that they're going to adopt the same strategy like you brought up at the beginning before the game even started. That what they're going to try to do is ensure that all of their resources are locked down and that they get a very good early game, maybe take an early lead with a couple kills, maybe take a, ta a tower and, and get some plates off of some of the first towers really quick. I think that's what they're going to want to do. So here we've got all of the champions queued up. Uh, also, I have always liked how Silas looks like he's just 100% ripping off Assassin's Creed. So, <laughs> that's, I always thought that was funny. Sure is. It looks like we're playing a uh, blue team now. So, now we're taking the bottom corner of the map. Yep. Hopefully that doesn't uh, change up against the success too much. It does take... Uh, bit different styles depending on which side of the map on just because it's not entirely symmetrical um yeah which does add a little bit of flavor to summoner's rift mm -hmm. it's, it's not just like a a crude you know perfectly correct and and symmetrical like you were saying field of play there are a little bit of nuances that come with that. 
Also, the like cyberpunk Garen thing throws me off. Like, I, I'm not a fan. Oh but... yeah, it definitely looks weird. It doesn't fit his character that much. Well, because it, it it constantly like when I look at it, it just doesn't look like him. So I forget that that's him. Yeah. Look up, see the buzzard circling. Like our bottom lane is waiting for our jungler and help him leave. Yes, yeah, so, so it looks like they're spreading their forces here. They're waiting for the spawns, and they're doing so in teams of two. Or sorry, two teams. Because obviously this is a team of three. All right, so they take the first one very quickly. But Garen and is waiting love. for Fred to uh, put his guard down. But yep. Man. Minions anyway. Gun's like, all right, I'm getting out of this. Yep. I'm an independent cat. You know, with that skin, uh, Garen looks a lot more like Echo. <laughs> he does a little bit. Honey. I was thinking he looks like uh, like a, a cyberpunk version of Cloud. Cloud Strike from Final Fantasy VII. Oh, yeah, that's him. Because he's got that big, like, curved blade as opposed to his normal broadsword. Mm-hmm. From the beard. Traded his armor out for a jacket. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's the problem. Well, I'll tell you what, guys. We're going to take a quick break here and uh, patch up Andrew's finger. So, uh, Andrew, if you will, go ahead and... Um, uh, there's a first aid kit in my desk. You can take a break here, and Aaron will be back when he's not bleeding all over the place. I promise, I didn't get mad and hurt him. Uh, he's I, It's just a freak thing. His fingers started bleeding, so he's going to take care of that, and you're going to be stuck with uh, just me for a little bit here. But yeah, there's some Band-Aids up in that top shelf above my desk there. Yeah, there you go. All right. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. So, sorry about that. In the midst of the battle, we had an actual injury. Man, that's going to be hard to explain, Andrew, if you're late for class. Like, I'm sorry, I got injured last night at an esports event. I wasn't even playing. All right, here we go. So, Mr. Gunk trying to get the better of Tread, and it looks like he's doing so. And Lum trying to pin Mr. One-Shot down. But the very mobile Silas able to sort of dance around there. We need to regroup. Regroup or retreat. Said the same thing. You mean between the two of you, you didn't have a pocket knife? What kind of boys are you? You're not allowed to have weapons, but you're allowed to have a pocket knife. Sorry, I'm just uh, jazzing my students here. All right, so we're seeing... Uh, McLeod and Locust trying to take down Melody, but it's really not having the desired effect. Melody, with that buff off of his support, is really kind of manhandling both of them, which is impressive. And Melody having a very strong area of effect game, so not only is he able to damage both of their champions at once, but he's also taking out a lot of their minions, which is surely frustrating that side not able to mount a strong defense, at least not as strong as they would like. And Gunk doing a good job of keeping Shred at bay. Horn is a challenging top laner to have to deal with. And yet, Gunk is seemingly getting the better of him. Oh, and he draws first blood, so the first kill does go to the Eagles. 
<laughs> Ironically, at the hands of a knight, which is the other team's mascot. Are there any eagles in this game? I don't know. Either way, it doesn't matter. Alright, and one shot. Really giving some grief to Alum, making him sort of fight on his own terms. Which is nice. You like to see it. So now that Orin is not have gunk to, to contend with, he's doing a little bit more damage. But Methodical Melody really doing an excellent job of keeping bottom lane clear and giving a big push on that bottom tower. Hopefully they'll be able to do some real damage and take that pretty quickly. And it looks like Leona has come in to try to put a stop to that. And looks like Raptor Claw is going to team up with his bottom lane to take the Drake. And it looks like they're going to be successful. They can avoid the steal here. Oh, they may not. Yeah, so Raptor Claw goes down. And Methodical Melody does get a kill, so we're leading on kill count. But they do wind up stealing the dragon, it looks like. Hey, and Andrew's back! Oh, boy. Yeah, sorry, I just felt the need to make a quick blood sacrifice for the sake of hearing the victory. Yeah, well, after this, I mean, if we don't win, then there's a demon that owes us an explanation. Uh-oh. <laughs> That's not a joke I should make here. <laughs> we are a Christian university. <laughs> Just a reminder. No, in all seriousness, we're, we're glad you're okay. Do you know what happened? Did you just, like, scrape your finger against I something? I was... I think I was picking at the punch. Oh, yeah. That's true. Alright, so, back to the game. Gunk giving some real difficulty to tread, but... Oh, wait, and there he goes oh, with the nice. kill. And just kind of casually walked away. Mm-hmm. Like, yeah, yeah, I took him out. Here. Like, bottom lane is heading for Jin. Jin's by himself. <laughs> Catch him. No worries. Like, our mid laner, top laner, and jungler are converging in on the. Yeah, I believe that's what they're setting up for. Just Alan that's in their uh, mid. So like we're pushing in a uh, bot. Yeah, which was a point of weakness for us in the last round, but yeah, really getting aggressive on the bottom lane for this one. And we, oh sorry, go ahead. Great that we're uh, catching up, uh, doing a lot better than last. <laughs> Yeah, so one of the things that we did in the last round was adopt sort of a feeder strategy where we had our top lane and our mid laner at higher levels than everybody else, and it looks like we've done a similar strategy this time. We'll see if it has similar results or we have to make an adjustment and do a more even distribution of resources in the next game. quickly attacking Mr. One Shot and taking him down, but they they did sort of double team and ambush him. Yeah. Right that was there. A shame. But impressive. Yeah. Well played by the knights. Hopefully Mr. Gun can make up with that. He is a two levels higher than uh, the other enemy uh, top laner. Yeah, Orn really kind of on the ropes against him here. 
He's doing well. And it looks like Dunk is gonna... Nope, he heads back to his lane and we're seeing a little bit of a fight between one shot and alum there. That's some nice health uh, uh blocked off of him. Nice good. Uh, Mr. Gunk has managed to uh, whittle Horn down to below half health while he's still almost past full health. Yeah, and that's one thing that I think we saw a lot in the last one, although it was uh, a more drastic contrast. I think Orn's doing better against our top laner than their, their previous top laner was. However, you see a similar thing happening where he just kind of paper cuts you to death. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening here. Like he just hits, and then the other guy retreats, and then hits, and the other guy retreats. Well, you only have to do that two or three times, and then all of a sudden you've got significantly more HP than your opponent. Now, it did cost Gunk to be able to do that, so he's going to drop back and try to recover a little bit. Yeah, that was looking pretty dicey there. Thank goodness he can't get out of there. Oh, hopefully Kane doesn't uh, catch him. <laughs> yeah, he's going to try to, though. Oof. Oh, looks like, yep, yep, Kane got executed. He was able to get him. That's still an advantage for us. Uh, we have a good bit more gold and kills than they do. Oh, looks like they're getting even on gold. Like, Count seems rising pretty. Nice. Yep. They must be doing some resource farming. Mm. Break the dragon is gearing up, uh, showing up soon. We'll probably start focusing on that or the rift. Yeah, which one would you opt for at this point? Hmm. Um, I'd say I'd, I'd probably go for the dragon first. Okay, um, but but there's. <laughs> reason to take either, but it'd probably be better to try to secure an, uh, uh, more passive advantage uh, in the early game. But it does look like we're going for Rift Herald to get us some good uh, headway on the tower. Yeah, I was actually wondering if maybe you go for Rift Herald because right now it looks like the most we've taken is one plate on our top lane and then one plate on our bottom lane tower so they may be wanting to do that to try to give us a, a slight tower advantage and open up a lane to be able to make their final push yeah that could be a better push for us unfortunately it looks like uh three of the enemy team is already on barrel yeah so they may not that may not be worth it at the moment unless mr gunk hear it looks like he's driving them away Unless they they got so blue team takes the dragon. Oh, that's great for us. Uh, looks like the enemy team took the rift. Got the uh, dragon. They're focusing on that. Yep. That was great. Spawning at five. Like, Mr. Yep. Gunk is tipping away at him again. Uh-huh. Uh, three minutes ahead in the future, looks like Zane is congratulating himself again. Oh, yep, Zane likes got, doing that. He got Orn. That, that got him good. Yep. So, we're now ahead by a score of three to six, and... Uh, doing pretty well on gold and everything else. And I, as I say that, McLeod takes down Methodical Melody, so they do get the kill on us. Yeah. But Raptor Claw popping out the ult and really doing some damage here. 
Unfortunately, they got them good. They're getting us good now. Yeah. All converging on bot tower. Hopefully, we can focus. Uh, Silas is like going for the mid tower. Hope we can get that while they're busy on bottom. But here, looks like we're gonna need to go back, focus on bottoms, make sure they don't push us all the way in. So you'll notice that the Rift Herald is really a big part of that strategy. They just decided that they're going to open up bottom lane on us. Yeah, they they really uh, managed to use Herald at an opportune moment there. They really did, and uh, they've also evened up the score on kills. So in a very short amount of time, Vermont actually on top, at least by the numbers. Yeah, that's a shame. Been head and gold. Yep. Our top lane are still three levels ahead of us. Yeah, top lane have a higher average level, but uh, especially our top and mid lane are at a higher level than both of theirs, so we're just kind of feeding those two and using them as our, our big guns. Yeah, hopefully they don't wise up that guy and counter it. Hey, to be fair though, bottom lane has actually done fairly well yeah. this round, despite the fact that they're actually at a lower level than their opponents. Seems like we're fixing what broke last time, but they aren't answering as well. Yeah. Unfortunately, looks like they're gunking our top pretty hard. Hopefully, they're ganking gunk. <laughs> And Raptor Claw comes in to act as a distraction. Unfortunately, he got. It. Oh, and Gunk does get the kill, and death. but it so cost him his teammate to be able to do that. Mm, at least he but made still, it was out of a bad situation. Right. I mean, in that situation, it's a it's a one v three, and he was still able to get the kill and then get out of there. So, overall, not a bad day for him. Okay. Gunk man, get out of there. He's stuck between the enemies and their base. That, that's certainly between a rock and a hard place. Yeah, no. A bunch of rough three rocks in a hard place. See, but now they've opened up top lane, and he's going to get inside the enemy base. Now he gets killed fairly quickly afterward, but the point is, like, especially considering we've, we're only about 18 minutes into the game, it's impressive that he was able to get uh, a push that far into enemy territory. Mm -hmm. So top lane really sort of opening up a lot of opportunities for us this round. Now they're doing a 2v1 against Mr. One-Shot. And it looks like they're going to have to retreat after a well-timed ultimate by Mr. One-Shot. Oh, and the cloud comes out of nowhere for that one. Doesn't look like we're going to be able to hold off. And Alum goes on a killing spree, getting Vola Bear. And a double kill there. Able to take Yumi. So, very quickly, Vermont kind of out ahead here. Yeah, that's a change. What do you think we're, we're going to need to do to pull back ahead in this game? You know, it could be a number of different things, but the fact that we're doing so well on top lane, I think, means that we should probably... They're going to take this turret here pretty soon. Um, now that we've got that lane open and available, they're going to have to guard against it a little bit closer. And so I would use that as a distraction and maybe have Gunk uh, do some other things, like maybe engage in some team fights or, or you know, jump into the jungle a little bit more often here because most of his work is done on the top lane at least. And so him being able to team up with other people in different positions, I think is going to be a big help, especially considering that he is currently our highest level player. So if they're going to make a push here and, and mount a comeback, I think that they're going to have to very strategically use the two players that they've fed and do so in a way that's going to be beneficial because unfortunately what they've done now is uh, our second highest level player is Mr. One Shot and almost their entire team is the same level as him. So now... 
beating one or two characters strategy. It can work extremely well, but it can also, if the other team gets far enough ahead of you, find yourself to where those are really the only two competitive players that you have and the rest of the team just can't really hold up to them. Yeah, that was uh, some pretty insightful commentary. Pretty proud of how far your understanding of the game has come. Well, you know, I did stay at a Holiday Inn Express last night, so. You remember those old commercials? Oh, uh, yeah. The guy was, like, there at a business meeting and is like, man, how long have you been studying this? He's like, oh, I don't even work here. I just worked, stayed at a Holiday Inn Express last night. <laughs> those are good commercials. Uh-huh. All right, so it looks like we're going to go for the blue buff here. Uh, Garen and Yumi are thing down top lane. Garen thing around there. Garen and Nash are spawned in, so uh, hopefully we don't give that up to them. Yeah, I hope not. Gunk is heading that direction, which may indicate that he's getting rid of some of those wards and setting up for Baron. Mm hmm. I think that they are going to make a push for Baron quickly, which uh, that's one of the fastest way to turn the tide on the advantage right there. Uh, and, you know, to their credit, they've already done that to a degree. They've just about cut off on gold. They're behind in kills, but uh, we're even on towers. We're only one behind in dragons, so it's by no means like Faulkner is way behind the eight ball here. Yeah, if we can catch a dragon or turret or two probably be able to pull ahead I think yeah. so and like I said if uh, mr. gunk manages to put some work in uh, at the other lanes that'll be really great for us I think Pract so you practically serve as a secondary jungler in that regard. The one thing that you're seeing this Vermont tech team do a good job of is their ambushes are more frequent and seemingly more successful than ours. So I think what they've done is they've figured out part of our strategy and how to team fight. Uh, and because of that, some of our quote-unquote weaker members are more vulnerable, which is the way that they're able to rack up so many kills and get extra gold on us. Yeah, I think that is what's happening. So I think we're going to need to be a little bit more cautious with our underleveled characters. I think they're trying to counter our strategy. And we're seeing that with Methodical Melody going down right there. Red Team's turret has been destroyed. Red Team's turret has been destroyed. So this is an interesting change up. They've got Yumi hanging out with Mr. Gunk as opposed to bottom lane, which he's accustomed to doing. So it's an interesting change up than what we're normally doing. We'll see if it pays off for us. Mm-hmm. Uh, especially since they're probably going to be uh, more focused on making Mr. Gunk more versatile and uh, going around the whole field, uh, try to help out here and there. Uh, it makes sense to uh, have Boomy on him, especially in sense Yumi on him, especially since he's the highest level character. So, they're basically their ace in the hole. Yeah, they very much adopted a Rick get Ricker strategy here to where uh, they're just essentially letting him, it's kind of like when you were a kid and you were playing Pokemon and you had your starter like 15 levels ahead of everybody oh, else yeah. in your party. By the way, um, I'm very much looking forward to the Pokemon game coming out Friday. I've already got it pre-ordered, so that'll be fun. But yeah, it is kind of like that to where you've got one character that's just super leveled up and then you use that to carry the whole rest of the team. Oh, and we have a dragon spawn. And it looks like they're already fighting over it before the dragon even shows up. Oh boy. Fun stuff. Centralized. Hopefully they don't. Ooh, ooh wow. Away at us. Yeah, and they so spread us out pretty bad. Yeah, th that was really a question of positioning, and Faulkner was not able to answer very effectively, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And very quickly, Faulkner is kind of against the ropes here, at least by the numbers. Yeah. So, not a great battle on our part. Of 
So what Gunk I think is going to do here is try to kite McLeod. Red team has slain the dragon. Yeah, yeah, Red Team has already slain the dragon, so now McLeod is like, okay, I've done my part. I've kept Gunk off of him. I'm gonna just hang back here. And I think Gunk knew at the, you know, when that was happening that he was not going to be able to clear out the entire team and take the dragon by himself, higher level or not. So this may be the strategy. Are we going to go after Baron? Yeah, it looks like we're setting up for it. Um, Which, right now, Baron would be an extremely useful uh, asset to have on our side. Oh, yeah. We managed to uh, catch Rack up there, and then you could probably turn the side. I think so. Well enough. It's, it's something that's not quite essential per se, but it would be an extremely helpful tool in the tool belt if we had it. The problem is, have we gotten to a point to where our party can't team fight effectively enough to keep the other team off of Baron Nasher long enough to take it? Mm, yeah, since their levels are more spread out evenly, uh, they're going to be a lot better in team fight. Once, at least once they take out Mr. Gunk. So if you're in a team fight at this time, what do you think the strategy is? Do you, is there any one particular person you would you would aim at? Or? Um, as for the enemy team, I'd say uh, their priority would be Mr. Gunk. Well, obviously, I meant I meant our direction. Yeah. Um. I mean, look like uh. Hmm. Kane is a pretty big DPS, and mm -hmm. uh, he's usually the one. Uh, taking down our team's health, so. See, that's kind of what I was thinking. So what may be happening here is because their team is more balanced, they may be actually waiting until the other team gets Baron Nasher low and then decides to attack. It looks like that's what they're actually doing. Although they may have jumped the gun here a little bit. Uh, it doesn't look like they're hurting for great team right here. Yeah, I don't think this is gonna end well for us. Which I hate to say that, but. And one shot goes down, dunk goes down, or he's not down, but he's on the run. And the red team takes Baron Nasher as well. Man, Orton keeps getting away with just a sliver of health. Yep. Unfortunately, they... Uh, he's, they he's been almost dead several times. Yeah. Oh man, they got our whole team down. That's yeah. A lot kill. Man, that was. Uh... Mm hmm. Well, let's see how we can come back from this. Well, it's going to be a challenge. Huh. Faulkner is not exactly on its last leg here, but it's getting to the point to where they need to do something to gain some ground back or else they're going to be past the point of no return. And that will come quickly <laughs> if, if they can't make some changes here. I heard you say they've gone wrong this match. I would say the biggest issue has been that the other team just figured out our strategy and found a pretty good way to counter it, which is um, instead of having Gunk basically be our one-man wrecking crew and just come through and sniping, which I think was the plan, they've done a better job of sticking together. I think that really has been it because you've noticed every time they've taken down Gunk uh, and the rest of our team, it's because they've had superior numbers. See, they're all uh, managing to stay closer together. Uh, right. That really uh, helps them uh, have a more tight-knit uh, force against us. Right. I, I think that with the best thing that can happen with this strategy is that you have to have a couple of really heavy hitters basically go around the map and just be the boogeyman for the other team, uh, taking down one at a time, and that's just not happened so far. Uh, I hate to say it, but it looks like this may be ball game right here. Because mm -hmm. 
all of our, our team is just now back on the field. And now we're getting to the point to where even the average level of their players is comparable to Mr. One Shot and Dunk, who are two heavy hitters. And so they've basically got an entire team of people as powerful as our top two. And that's not a good position to be in. They just took Dragon. And. Baron Nash is going to be spawning in three minutes. Hey, we can grab him again. as they're trying to set up for Baron Nasher. Pretty yeah. important to make sure that they don't get the chance to set up board. I think what would really be beneficial here is if Mr. Gunk could just, when they're, they're out doing that, just maybe do a 2v1 and take out two of them at once. That might be something that we could start slow rolling our way back. But it's going to be a challenge to be able to do that. Yeah, it looks, they're, it looks like they're uh, traveling in two centralized group. Like just where the way they're moving about, there's too many of them for uh, Mr. Gun to be able to pick them off. Yeah, that's what it seems like. Top lane towers now. Looks like it's our last one left. Yeah, so now even top lane they've started to catch up on, which of course was our strong point up until now. Fair enough, just got on. Like they're gathering up there, I'm ready for it. So doing a great job with map control and keeping their rank very tight here. Fred is really the only one that's separated from the group and he's in a better position to handle Volibear. Bear. So I don't know that the team would be able to steal Baron here even though they desperately need to. Mm -hmm. eating my words. They really did manage to come up with a county strategy to us. Yeah. I didn't expect them to do so so effectively. Yeah. That really came out of nowhere. Well, I mean, this is why it's the playoffs. This is the semifinal round, and teams can, can swing back and forth in a big way. Alright, so you see Dunk's actually doing exactly what I suggested, which is uh, use their, their most powerful character to kind of snipe and work as an assassin here. Oh, man. Wow. Well, looks like they couldn't kill, uh, secure the kill on Kane. Nope. And part of that was because they had the beefed up minions from Baron that were also attacking him, and he wasn't able to overcome both them and the, the minions at the same time. Mm hmm So, the inability to steal the Baron really proving to be a problem. I... Uh, 
Yeah, so same thing as last time, Logan. Just pull up the uh, the league feed there at the bottom. There you go, right there. There we go. Going so fast and intense, it's hard to gather my thoughts. Yeah, a lot of things are happening. I, it's been a hot minute since Faulkner even got a kill. Mm -hmm. And Raptor Claw goes down. Yeah, they've really learned how to travel in a pack. Yeah, which generally speaking is not a good strategy for League of Legends, but here they've really figured out a way to make that work. Because mm -hmm. even though you typically don't want to do that, you want to be able to spread out to be able to gain more resources. Um, there is safety in numbers, and that's essentially what they've been doing. And uh, have slain the dragon successfully as well. So it looks like they've got all the buffs that they need. And they're going to make a push here. So Faulkner going to have to defend the base. And Dunk is taken down. Lucas able to get a double kill there. And I'm afraid this may be it. Mm hmm. Sure looks like it. Faulkner really doesn't have an answer, and it's going to be at least 40 seconds before their big gun is able to respawn. So, yep, that's, that's going to be all. Unfortunately, Faulkner losing the Good second game. round. Yeah, a well played game. Uh, well managed mm -hmm. game by the Vermont Knights and uh, definitely give them props for that and ultimately uh, they just had a, a better strategy and it wound up working for them better uh, overall so unfortunately that's the the way that it goes sometimes you just get counterpicked like that so what we're going to do here is we are going to take a break and since we're on delay and the teams have decided to take a break uh, we're going to do the same, so we're going to go to a break. Did you know that 100% of Faulkner's computer science graduates since 2014 have found jobs in their fields within six months of graduating? It's a great time to be a computer scientist. Everyone is walking around with a computer in their pocket in the form of a smartphone. And it takes software developers to make those things work. I built church websites, and through the training and instruction that I received from Faulkner, I was able to go right into my career after graduation. It laid a solid foundation for what you need to know. Um, I'm getting a lot of hands-on experience within my field, and also they're just giving me a wide variety of options of things that I might want to pursue in the future. In the state of Alabama alone, there are over 4,000 tech-related jobs available. And the preparation that you receive at Faulkner University will allow you to go to work almost anywhere as a software developer. It's a great time to be a Faulkner Eagle, and it's a great time to be a computer scientist. I hope you'll come and join us. Bless the hearth and 
and every board and each place of rest and every door that opens wide to stranger as to kin and every crystal window pane that lets the starlight in at home I'm going home for solace and Forsake me, take me Preparing leaders for the river region and beyond, Faulkner University's Harris College of Business is distinctively different, focusing on ethics and character development in the classroom and building ethical foundations with our new Ethics Institute. Living the mission of Faulkner University to glorify God through education of the whole person, emphasizing integrity of character in a caring Christian environment where every individual matters every day. As a student at the Harris College of Business, I saw firsthand the mission of Faulkner University. My professors there not only taught me, but they also mentored me. They encouraged me, they cared for me, they instilled character and integrity into me. I mattered every day. That mission hasn't changed. Harris College of Business continues to provide its students with the tools they need to succeed in today's business world. Training tomorrow's teachers, ministers, and scientists. Guiding future business leaders to positively impact our global economy. Teaching healthcare professionals to improve patient outcomes. Coaching athletes to give their best on and off the field. Men and women learning how to succeed wherever their dreams take them. That's Faulkner University. With over 70 undergraduate and graduate degree programs, you'll find your calling all in a Christian learning environment. Faulkner University. Discover more at faulkner.edu. back everybody thanks so much for sticking with us for the rubber match for this league of legends game so it is now tied up one to one so faulkner has to win the next win or face elimination if they win this next match though they are going to the championship so we're certainly looking forward to that and hoping that they can pull out a win here so andrew we noticed several issues that were going on in the last match and now it's really up to faulkner to have to counter the Vermont Tech Knight strategy and what would you do based on what you saw the last time what adjustments would you make here um well I'd say uh, definitely try to space out the XP earning um, a bit more uh, just so that we're a bit better in team fights uh, I noticed that the strategy they went for even though it's generally unadvised to travel in groups, um, it really worked against us because we focused so much of our uh, XP and feeding on one character so mm -hmm. that whenever either that one character tried to pick someone off, they were all grouped together so that they could easily repel him. And yet, whenever all our other players tried to grab him, they had more overall level than we did. So... Mm -hmm. It was just a win for them either way. That was really damaging for us. Yeah, definitely was. So uh, hopefully they'll be able to do that, and uh, we'll be able to fix it here quickly. Um, I think that they are going to have to spread their XP out a little bit more. I think that strategy worked extremely well for them in the first uh, match, but... Uh, ultimately, it's one that they were able to come up with a good answer for, and so now you're going to see a much more traditional strategy. They're probably going to, uh, I think, if I were them, I would definitely work a little bit more on my jungler because they did so much better on ganking than us in the last round. I think being able to beef up the jungler a little bit more would give us the ability to be a little bit more mobile, a little bit more adaptable. 
uh, which was not something that we had in the last round. And so hopefully that will uh, go ahead and solidify a win for Faulkner here today. So it looks like they're going ahead and getting the client ready and going to be picking here soon. So uh, we will certainly be looking forward to seeing what they're going to do for the next round. Yeah, getting their bands in. So one of the things that I think they may do as well is they might decide to just uh, boost their aggro a little bit. Um, might choose some characters that are a little bit more the aggressive side, less on the tanky. But that may be something that they try for in this next round. But we will see. Although if they try the apes together strong strategy again, uh, I'd say that a good way to capitalize on them doing that would be to focus more on punishing them for being where they're not. Since they would, they were all uh, traveling closely together, so they obviously couldn't be spread out and everywhere at once, so it'd be a lot more important to hit them where they're not looking. I don't know if they'll adopt the same cluster strategy again because they may be thinking that they would expect it, but if they do, I have a few characters with a substantial amount of AoE damage. Oh, yeah. Uh, to be able to definitely. yeah to, to whittle down characters uh, quickly and then maybe have one character that's more of a focus damage character so that he can just sort of uh, focus and take one out while the rest of the team focuses on the team at heart. So that might be a winning strategy as well. We'll just have to see what these guys cook up. Mm -hmm. And, of course, uh, looking forward to seeing how they're able to pull that off. Hopefully they don't serve to us cold. Yeah, I hope not. Uh, I would love to be able to see these guys go on to a championship. They've worked really hard this year. They've been one of the bright spots on Faulkner Esports' uh, schedule. They've pulled off some very impressive last-minute wins. And you would really love to see that culminate and materialize in the form of a championship. But to do that, they are going to have to win this match. So uh, hopefully they'll be able to, to pull it together and be able to power through on this one. And it looks like they're going ahead and getting everything set here in a second. Hopefully they'll, they'll begin that process here in just a minute. Which I believe one of the reasons that it's taking so long is that both teams sort of opted to take a quick break to uh, um, just sort of refresh themselves, which, I mean, is understandable. Remember, we started this at 6 p.m., so we've been going for two hours now. That's a long time to be sitting and staring at a computer screen. It, it does take a toll on you, so uh, they needed to kind of stretch their legs a little bit and uh, get back in the game, but they are in the band process right now. I'm actually watching Daniel's screen over there. You, you may notice me looking over. I'm actually seeing what Daniel's doing, kind of looking over his shoulder. Um, but he's in the band process now and, and going ahead and picking some of the bands that they're going to be using for the match. So, Andrew, if you were going to, uh, we've already talked about how to counter them and, and how to do it. What do you do if they decide to go with a completely different strategy? Like, you don't want to base all your strategy on what they did last round because there's always a chance that just to throw the other team off, they decide, oh, we'll do something completely different. Hmm. I mean, if they uh, decide to go for something completely different uh, and just kind of disregard uh, all the safeguards they put against our strategy before, mm -hmm. then it might be good to use the strategy from the first game again. Um, Essentially just run it like a replay of the first match, being fairly certain that Faulkner would not try to do a feeder strategy again. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. That honestly might not be a bad way to go. If I were the other team, I might try that. I do wonder what they're going to do on bands. Mm. They might uh, might decide not to, for example, they were pretty specific on banning uh, Garen in the first round, and they saw that Garen wasn't able to be as effective against them in that second round, so what they may do is they may keep the ban they had from the second one on that first tank. I would think that that would be a winning strategy because they did so much better with the other tank. So, I know we're trying to play 4G chess here, thinking about what they'll do if we're countering yeah. what they do, and so 
<laughs> but you know, we gotta do something to fill this. Mm-hmm. Gotta pay the bills. And I think uh, the moment where it all it all went wrong in the last match was when they really uh, caved in our bottom lane there. Yeah, they went super hard on on bottom lane. Yeah, they even popped a rift herald right as they were leaving, so that just sealed the deal there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that that was really kind of the beginning of the end, and after that, everything just kind of snowballed mm -hmm. because once they had that bottom lane open, we had to work so hard to make sure that it was defended. That they were able to make gains elsewhere, and I think they took just about every beast that spawned in the jungle after. So they got the Rift Herald, they got several dragons. Um, what was one of the other ones that they wound up taking? They took uh, Baron, Baron twice. Yeah. So, yeah, you can see how quickly that would devastate a team and not being able to get the resources that they need. And so they kind of got the advantage on both sides there. They were able to win in team fights and they were able to starve us out for resources. So. Uh, it just became something that was very difficult for us to open. But it looks like we are, uh, yeah, they're they're finishing up the ban process now. So we should be hearing from them soon. And we're locked in as a spectator, so uh, that countdown will start here uh, fairly shortly. I'd say it's going to be about a minute or two for the client to catch up. So they should be, we should be able to cut to and actually see their bands here in a second. So hopefully uh, that will be forthcoming very soon. Um, it's it's going to be a little bit more time, but it, it should be much better. So uh, hopefully that'll be done quickly. While we're waiting, uh, we could go ahead and give some announcements for things that are coming down the pipe in the future. First of all, for those of you that were not tuned in last night, Rocket League's blue team did advance to the finals. So that means that they are going to be playing Simpson County, or sorry, Simpson, uh, Simpson County College, but it's just Simpson College. Uh, Simpson College is going to be our next game, and that is going to come Monday, November the 28th, so that is going to be after the Thanksgiving break. So be sure to tune in at 6 p.m. for that. That's in two weeks from yesterday. So you're going to be able to watch them play for the championship, and this Faulkner Rocket team has been absolutely stellar the entire season. They've only lost one match. Oh, like, wow. Defeated, and they've only dropped one match the entire season. Man, that's, that's a pretty big news for Faulkner Esports. Yeah. So well, and I'd love to take credit for it, because you know I like taking credit for things, but really, it's it's been mostly them. Uh, I know a little bit about Rocket League, but all of the members of the team are been better players than I am. So it's really been mostly them, and so I give a lot of credit to them. And we're able to co coalesce as a team very the time, and their comms and teamwork are just phenomenal. So they've got that going for them. They're doing very well, and we're looking forward to them playing Simpson. We've already beaten them once this season. We can do it again. If they do, and are the league champions, and, of course, uh, League of Legends, if they are able to win this next match, they will be playing Seneca, who we've also already played. Uh, we actually lost our game against them in, in a very close, I mean, they barely squeaked by. So if we beat the Vermont Tech Knights here tonight, we will be able to play Seneca. And we came with an eyelash of beating them last time. So we may be able to beat them in the championship this time and be, become division champions of this as well. It would be pretty astounding to be able to win two championships in our first year. Oh, yeah. That'd be great. But we got to clear this hurdle first, and mm -hmm. so I uh, got to take down the Vermont Knights. Uh, in other news, we do have another season coming up in the spring, so regardless of what happens here tonight or Monday, then uh, we are going to have a whole new season for you slated in the spring. That's going to start uh, roughly February-ish, but we do have an event on December the 10th for Smash Brothers Tournament from not only the state of Alabama, but other states. We've already got people signed up from Georgia and Mississippi. That's going to be a very big event. We've got some of the best Smash players in the Southeast coming right to the Faulkner's campus to be able to do that. Sounds like a big deal. I hope so. I hope it will be. Uh, hopefully some of those high school students that are coming here will get look at our facilities and be like, yeah, I can play at Faulkner. I can see myself playing Smash here. Uh, we'll see that uh, hopefully coming shortly. 
uh, like I said, that will be December 10th, so that's a, a little less than a month away from today, and that'll be our really our last event of the year before we go into the Christmas break. And then we'll be back here in, I think, the second week of January is when everybody will reconvene. We'll be practicing, and then the season starts, I believe, either the last week of January or the first week of February. So we got a lot of stuff coming up down the pipe. And it looks like they're going ahead and getting uh, their champions locked in. So they have three out of the five, and so that process will start here in just a little bit on our screen, so we'll be able to give you some commentary on that. It does seem like it's taking longer this round. I wonder yeah. why. It's already 8-11. Might be because I'm more tired. Did I tell you what I did today? No. So my dad, who is one of the uh, special district improvement specialists for the Central District for Alabama FFA, they hosted a workshop today, and some of y'all may not realize this, but I'm actually a gold emblem winning parliamentary, uh, parliamentary procedure participant. I was a top debater on my flight, and I'm a registered parliamentarian, and because of that, I've been judging the state contest for the past six years. So I actually went down to the workshop today. They had it right here in Pike Road and had kids come in from all over the state to talk about several different events, and I was in charge of the Parley Pro event. So I have been up for quite a while today, and uh, I'm starting to uh, run out of gas here. So I do apologize to the audience if I seem a little allergic. I hope that I'm not. But um, that's what I've been doing today. I was with probably about 60, 70 high school students that were oh, interested dang. in doing that. So that was fun and a good recruiting opportunity for Faulkner as well. I mentioned that I was the esports coach and told them that if they wanted to, they could always uh, – get in touch with me to see about playing esports here at Faulkner University. So it looks like they've gone ahead and started the, the selection process. So we can go ahead and cut that, see what they're going to be picking for this next round. Let's see who we've got here. Tread the NAR 666. Way too long, dude. You got to shorten that username. Too many syllables. Red's picking his bands, and they did exactly what I predicted. They they banned the uh, tank that we had in the first round, that top laner, mm -hmm. which makes perfect sense. Let's see what Mr. Gunk bans. San Diego. Hmm. I don't really know that character. I can't say I'm super familiar with it either. All right, so it looks like they're going to run Orn on top again. Oh, boy. And Faulkner going to be on the red side this time, so they're going to be on the right, up in that top right corner. Hopefully there's some good juju there from the first one. Mm-hmm. Oh, it looks like we're using more guys now. Interesting. I would not have guessed that with Zane, but considering he was struggling a little bit with Garen in the last round, makes sense. Trundle, so probably going to use him as our jungler. And actually, they go with Volibear this time. And Cassidy. And it looks like Mr. One-Shot is going to be playing Victor this time. And Kane. Yeah, he was Kane last. Understandable. Well, since uh, their team, they're up more. They might be well acquainted with Mordecai. Possibly. I have I seen Zane. That. I have seen Zane play a lot of Mordekaiser, though, so may cancel out. Oh, great. It just bans Sivir. Bottom laner. Yeah. They're picking. And then Leone. Got 
Bethesda and not bottom. Interest. I don't think I've ever seen them play that duo. Me well. neither. So they may be trying something different. They're gonna go with Jin again, which makes sense because the Jin Leona combo did very well for them in the last round. I'm actually a little bit surprised we didn't ban that. Yeah. Alright, well, we're going to get underway here in just a few seconds. So we'll be, uh, we'll be getting to that in three minutes, because of course that's uh, going to be how long it takes for the delay to kick in, but We've got a good matchup here. I'm I'm looking forward to it, and I'm really looking forward to the thing that I most anticipate is seeing how they run that bottom lane because I don't I've not seen them run that. Before. Mm-hmm. That's so, gonna be exciting. Yeah, it's gonna be an interesting to to see how they can pull that off and what exactly they're going to do for that one. I don't know. I, I I'm interested to see when whenever they do things. One of those things that it's like <laughs> I've not seen that work, but it could. Yeah. So we'll just we'll just have to see. Never know. Yep. Maybe they've been practicing it at uh, their their combo in secret. You know they have had to do several remote practices, and because Daniel, who is our captain, is also a one L in law school, so sometimes the times that he can practice don't exactly line up with the practice schedule. And because he lives so far away, he has to remote in anyway. So it's actually fairly common for these guys to practice remoting instead of doing it actually here in the East. So that's a little beside behind the scenes insight into the League of Legends team you may not realize. In fact, actually, right before the match started, I had to actually go in and take uh, Daniel's team picture because we're doing team pictures tomorrow, but he obviously won't be here. So we had to <laughs> we had to go ahead and get his tonight. Told him it was unfortunate that the team captain is not gonna have his picture. We definitely need to go ahead and get that. Speaking of, the guys at Faulkner Sports Network are doing an excellent job here. They broadcast not only esports, but they do all kinds of different events here. They do basically anything that has anything to do with sports. The sports information office at Faulkner Sports Network is handling it. They've done, this week already, they've done volleyball, basketball, men's and women's basketball. So... They got a lot on their plate, and we'd certainly appreciate all the help that they give us in being able to schedule things like that for us to be able to bring these products to you, the listener. And it looks like we got about 50 seconds left on the timer here. So we will be getting underway very shortly. Can you juggle? We got to do something to fill that down. Oh, um, I mean, I can try. <laughs> Got a bunch of cough drops here. I could try juggling those. Why are they? There was one per. Yeah. Yeah, well, I mean, because our thirds could get dropped. Yeah, it makes sense, if you think. Do you need it? And, uh, yeah, go, feeling go, go ahead, Andrew. All right, awesome. I am medicating students on camera. This is not a good look for. Fu- no, I'm kidding. I, I don't think anybody. I don't think anybody's gonna uh, look twice about you taking a cough drop on camera. <laughs> if I get a syringe out or start doing surgery, that might be a problem. But uh-huh. exhilarating broadcasting going on here tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Sure is. Completely redefined the genre. All right, looks like we're loading in. Yep. So we've got Trundle is one that they played a lot in early practices, but I, it's been a while since I've seen them play Trundle. So I will be interested to see how they play that. It's been a while. Mm-hmm. Like that great old Saturday Night Live. They had the different pretty categories and one of the categories is, it's been a minute. 
Welcome to Summoner's Rift. You seen that one? No. They do the the Black Jeopardy sketch. Kenan Thompson. Person. They're not live. You may be the only funny person left on Saturday. So I do like watching Nautilus just giant throws at people. Yeah, he's definitely fun to play and watch. We definitely have the the power sector over here. We've got Nautilus. Minions have spawned. This is the manliest of all the mm -hmm. lineups we've seen so far this year. We've got uh, Mordekaiser, who's... I don't know, he's basically like Tim Burton's version of Sauron. So it looks like instead of dividing into two teams, one of two and one of three like they did last round, they decided to let Mr. One Shot go ahead and go to work. The other two teams attack buff monsters. Mm -hmm. And well, Mr. John can play Mordecai's up. Well, yeah, and uh, I will say that I'm sure that part of the reason was because he was getting fed very well in the past two rounds, but also, you have to hand it to Mr. Gunk, even in the round that they lost in the last one. He has still played top lane extremely well. He was. I mean, yes, you can chalk some of that up to his level, but you can also chalk a lot of it up to the way that he would just sort of uh, slowly eat away at the enemy and take their towers before they could even know what hit he, He's played very well tonight. down again. Yep, same strategy. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Yeah. And even though Mordekaiser is not really thought of as your big area of attack guy, I mean, he certainly has area of attack, but he's not the main thing. Uh, he's utilizing what area of attack he does have very well, waiting for the minions to sort of bunch up and then take big swings at them. Mm -hmm. So he's doing that in a very smart way. Although it looks like the minions may have actually saved Orn there. Oh, maybe not oh, for long. Wow. wow. That was it was very close. I'm actually kind of surprised it didn't seal the deal. Their jungler is coming. Yeah. Bull bears chasing us. Turret. And unfortunately, Frisbee goes down, so Vermont Tech takes the first blood. Here. Oh. But we did get one of the panels off of their first tower, which is a pretty solid win for us. And one shot really giving alum the business. Bully bear coming down top. Cover the top. Bully bear bottom lane. Bottom laner. Recalling. Yeah, and I think what we're seeing so far is that they have adjusted their strategy because if you look at our overall levels, um, Frisbee's still getting a little bit less love, but they're much more evenly spread than they have been in the past few rounds. Mm-hmm. Bum. Well, we can up. Well, their board is also... Well, generally speaking, I think that... Do you don't beef up the port 
quite as much. At least that's a fairly common way to go about it. And part of that is because a support can only do so much. Like, they can't rise above the level of the character they're supporting. And so if you have a, a super charged up support character, it, it's kind of like building really strong structures for a one-lane bridge. Like, it doesn't matter how strong the supports are, it can still only support one car at a time because it's just not wide enough. And so there's like a, a certain capacity there to where if your support is really strong, but your the person you're supporting isn't, um, it's kind of like trying to draw water with your hands. Like you, you need something more than that to be able to get the full potential. I just really need warning. You can almost hear um, him like doing the Thor voice in there. This is totally something Zane would do. Like, you want me to put the hammer down? One shot playing a much more even game with Alum. Mm hmm. There's always annoying, but. but. So, one of the things that you're seeing Gunk do a good job of, and Orin, uh, unfortunately, is able to counter it fairly effectively, but it's still giving him some issues. Oh, and it looks like uh, Vermont Tech takes the dragon. So, not a, not a great sign for the Eagles tonight. Come on, one shot. On him. Yeah, he came very... And I'm a little disconcerted that we've not seen a kill on the other side yet. I mean, you, you look at, we've got a one nothing score and we're seven minutes into the game. Both teams playing very good. Come on guys, finish the job. No, actually deciding to take a step. So, kind of what I was talking about a second ago, both teams just playing It may be because both of them know that if they lose this game, that's it, end of their season. And so, both teams trying to play a little bit more conservatively than they may, might do normally. And it looks like Raptor Claw is trying to take Rift Guardian, but... Vermont is going to come in and try to steal here. Ooh, and unfortunately we're able to do so. Come on, Gunk. Can he do it? Come on, get him, get him. Awesome. Yes! That was great. Huh. Wow. Awesome. Did we actually get the Rift Beast or not? I didn't see. Yeah, we did. So we got the Rift Beast and both kills. Oh. 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 And he got the kill. So a pretty big up turn. Eternal. That change went about as well as it could have expected to, be, to have gone. Doesn't fuck. Cleaning up a little bit, and it looks like they get the blue buff. And yeah, Orn really pushed. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised he did. I don't know why. Yeah, hopefully a costly one. We may look at as a turning point. Mm -hmm. So where do you use the 
try to do that and push on top lane because you've had a little success there already, or do you help one of the areas that might be struggling a little more? Hmm, I'd say since they're a lot more much, my better keep can uh, that, like, if, you know, one of our lanes gets pushed in, uh, then we can immediately push back, uh, try to crack the kill mate. Well, I guess that is one way to go. So, Mr. Gunkin can Yeah. Oh, oh man. He man. really knows how to turn those ganks on their head. Yeah, he really played aggressively there and it paid off for him. The question is, can he survive this? Because mm. uh, he may be able to pull it off here. Uh, man. Which, granted, Although, this is a good match, too. Yeah. Oh, looks like more questions. Pull away from there. Ooh. Oh, Frisbee can get out of there. Or even take the kill. Yeah, yeah Frisbee might be trying to cut here, but yeah, he just popped his ult. Frisbee just. Mm hmm. Yep. Gunk is trying to take this tower at the same time that he's trying to fend off Shred, but I think he's maybe overextended himself a little. Mm -hmm. Oh, rip. another rip. Yeah, I wouldn't say that you use the Rift Herald on that one, though. I'd say you try to take that one and then maybe use the Rift Herald on the next one, or maybe in a different tower, in a different lane. Put, put a little pressure. Oh! Horn right. Like, take down the tower. Uh, they're going to try to gank him here, but he does get the first turret. Great. and gold. It's always a good thing to be ahead of. Out of all of the different stats you can look at, gold is definitely the most versatile. So it bends down at bot. Our turret. Good. So we're up at uh, Rift. Yep, they're gonna try to steal, but I think Angelic rightly realizes that he needs to wait on his teammate to surprise anything. And here they come. 
see how this plays out. Yep, he's gonna have to take off, and it looked like they're gonna spill the herald. That's a lot of lost value on it. Really is. Sacrifice the power to get up. Yep. Just better positioned than we were. So it's interesting, uh, one of the things that it looks like they're doing is trying to make push on top, which is kind of counterintuitive. You would think that they would not worry so much about top and, and run a different game since we've already been so dominant there, but I don't know, maybe their thinking is if they can make a comeback on top, they'll have us on the rope, I don't know. Mm. But we've still been fairly even this matchup so far. Losing the Rift Herald there, that was a big loss on our part. It hasn't helped. No, 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 I don't think it's by no means, like, fatal. And then Melody and Nautilus teaming up here to take out Orin. They are um, even. even. Just about even and ever. Yep. Like gold. And gold. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They've got quite a bit of buffs, and so we do need to watch out for that, but otherwise, I think we're doing fine. So you'll see that this is a strategy that they used actually a couple weeks ago, where they basically switched bottom and top lane uh, just to throw the opponent off, and so far it has worked out in their favor, because our bottom lane was able to clear what was remaining of top lane, and it looks as though they haven't cut to it yet, but um, Mordekaiser was able to deal some damage to Orn, who now they've done the same thing, and Orn's actually on bottom. Oh. So, we're, we're living in a crazy mixed up world. Oh. It's a bizarre League of Legends. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The same thing happens with one shot. Mm -hmm. So we just kind of traded a kill for a kill there. So now it will be interesting to see who takes the dragon because that's what this team fight is really going to be. Nope, and Raptor Claw goes down. That is not good for us. Down goes McLeod. Oh no, sorry, I, I read that wrong. The opposite. Cloud, Cloud got a kill. And a triple kill. Ooh. Junk is last man oh, standing. Dang. Holy cow. Junk took the ball out. And I would note that he's not as beefed up as he was in the previous ones. So now he's going to take a swing at the dragon. That's a bold move, Cotton. Let's see if it pays off for him. Boy. And one shot comes in to back him up, which means that there's very little chance that Orn's gonna try to steal here. If they can get the dragon, even though it cost us most of our team. Oh, and in comes Trundle to seal the deal. Ooh, nice. Good job, guys. I was holding my breath. Yeah. Man, Young really pulled in clutch. Really did. That came out of the blue. I wish I was experienced enough to know how he did. Well, he just kind of weathered the storm, and by the time that everybody else was already at very low HP, he still had most of his left. I guess that's really all it took. Hmm. 
And looks like we're Bird Rift Herald. Yep. Mr. Kong Kong born again. It's really bullying in him. Yeah, and Horn's a fairly beefy tank, so the fact that he's able to knock down his HP so quickly is a testament to how well he's doing right now. Mm -hmm. It is weird to see both top laners fighting on the bottom, though. That's pretty funny. <laughs> yeah. Top fight. Bottom laner, our, our bottom laner and our junglers on mid, like everything's mixed up. Yeah. Like pushing them in, good. Yeah, it's it's working out well for us so far. The past, I would say, three or four minutes of gameplay have been all fault. Mm -hmm. Far be it for me to uh, question conventional wisdom when it's working. They're starting to team up to take on our bottom lane team, which is currently in mid. Mm -hmm. See, this is something that you don't get in regular sport. Not at so long, uh, all of A lot of our guys cool. just fall. Kind of left crap off. So it doesn't look like they're. Yeah, and I'm a little surprised because I would think they would. Or because they could. Fall. Looks like they're doing kind of the opposite of what you said. Uh, they're not upping their aggro at all. Yeah. Uh, if anything, I think they need to be more aggressive. Mm -hmm. I'm glad they're not, but that would be my nice if I were them. It's the part that the audience, you guys watching at home, can't hear. Uh, okay. oh, oh no. So close. Yeah. Uh huh. That puts in. Gunk. Honestly, can't tell. Melody was rooted there for a second. So. so it looks like we're about to make a big sweep here. Or not. He might retreat. It looks like everybody's congregating up in the middle of the map here. About to try to take the dragon. Yep. Seems like we're just playing a lot of chicken all around dragon. Well, because obviously the, the ideal scenario is for your opponent to expend a lot of energy taking the dragon, and then you come in and sweep and you get a bunch of kills and get the dragon on top of it. But it looks like this time, Vermont is basically just going to let them take it without, without a fight. So I guess their strategy was let them take the dragon and then when they're at lower HP we'll go attack and get a big kill on them. But so far has been working. Yep. 
but Mr. Gunk gets killed and the shutdown. That actually worked out very well for the Eagles. Good job, guys. Yeah. Better give them a congratulatory pep talk after. Well, I don't think they'll need the pep talk after this. I think what they're doing is uh, pep up enough. Yeah. You're gonna take them to Smashburger or something? You mean Whataburger? Whataburger. Yeah. Now for some Whataburger. Oh, looks like we're taking Baron Nash. Yep. Hey, what? <laughs> what? By the time this. So they attempt the Baron, but decide that it's going to be a little too much. So I think they realized this is a good thing. Looks like Gunk's gonna go for the Baron. Come on, guys. Well, they've taken out all but one. Shred is the only one that's still alive right now, so they can very safely take down the Baron, and they do. Getting pretty high. There you go. Honestly, I'm kind of glad they lost the second match. Otherwise, we wouldn't have been able to witness this. This has been a lot of fun. I'm not glad they lost the second. I'm the coach. I can't. I can't like fathom. Oh, I'm glad that they lost it. No, I can't do that. It's just not part of. Oh, well, double glad you. Then. That's fine. You be double glad. Double pre glad. For the ten people that got that reference, thank you. What do we got going on here? I think Nautilus like just kind of tickled a little bit and then ran out. Looks just like they're following the same strategy. Us. They're all crap attack. Yeah. Looks like that's working out. Well, part of it is because Faulkner just has the advantage on golds and levels that if they walk around in a pack and Faulkner's also walking around in a pack, all that means is you get five extra kills. Yeah. Or it has been so far this match. Now, see, this might work where they're doing 5v3. Then you can actually do some damage. Yeah, they, they take Frisbee. Um, and one oh, shot dang. gets Raptor. Yeah. So see, this time it's not just Gunk. I mean, Gunk seems to be having a game of his life here, but at the same time, the rest of the team is much better leveled and they've got the super minions here, so they're just kind of running the table. Great. It is a joy to watch. Yep. And down goes Shred. Oh, barely any. Bum, ba -da -ba -dum, bum. And the first inhibitor. Has been destroyed. And it looks like they're gonna be like, yep, that's enough. Huh. We're we're good. In at probably the now. They well, got the inhibitor. Now they're getting. Yeah. 
And the thing is, you don't want to push so hard that you overextend yourself and lose the advantage that you already have. Like, sometimes it's better to just play it slow. You know, they, they've got the point where they can kind of bully the other team a little bit. So instead of just overextending themselves, getting themselves killed, and letting them get a whole bunch of buffs and make a comeback, they'd rather stay in control of the game, which is strategically the right move. Mm -hmm. Honestly, it seems like once gotten ahead like 10 kills, that kind of seems like the game's already over. Yeah, there are definitely exceptions to that, but generally speaking, you're ahead by but it's not a comeback, but it is an uphill battle all the way if you're if you're down by that amount. Yeah, take two whole team wipe that. Yeah, I mean it's kind of it's kind of like being down eight in baseball. I mean, is that an insurmountable thing? No, but when two grand slams would just get you back to a tie, that's going to be a very steep hill to try to climb up. Yeah. And actually, it's kind of the same situation that Faulkner was in last match. Because mm -hmm. you'll notice that that's what happened with them, is that they just lost a couple of very close matches, but after they did, the resource advantage was all on the tech side. Bald and got... But uh, now it's the other way around, Chuck. Sometimes it's just so satisfying, especially in like. Well, I know that you're doing it not out of necessity or not panic, but you can kind of just sit back, stay calm, play your game, and you don't have to worry as much about the other team coming in and punishing you. Mm -hmm. It's it's much more relaxing to farm that. It's like harvest moon farming. Shut down. Which is a great Took like their creep back up on it. Yep, a little bit. So what they did was they just kind of got the, the jump on us there, and at a time where we had already exhausted a little bit of HP and got a numbers advantage on us, and it was just enough to make it. One of the reasons it was smart not to get too aggressive and too pushy, like, you don't want to get over it. Oh, Mr. One-Shot in danger, getting triple teamed here. Can he get out, or can somebody come and save him? It doesn't look like it. Yeah. So, yep. Shut down. Credit to Vermont Tech for a very impressive... So, as soon as he died, this um, one shot hit by Rapton's death cap. It ups his damage a whole lot. That's yep. So, Gunk taking out a tower here. And that is the last turret before the enemy base on top. I think that's why he probably channeled and went back to base, is because they're about to set up Baron. Mm hmm. Or they may be actually waiting for Vermont to go to Baron and then steal, which they're at such a, they've got such an advantage on them now, they could easily do if they can time her. And timing is going to be the question. <laughs> I will say though, even though Faulkner has been steamrolling for the past several minutes, the fact that this game has gone on for 35 minutes is a testament to how evenly matched these teams really are. Yeah, and that really turns out for pretty interesting games. It's always best evenly matched. For sure. So 
both teams kind of getting into a phase where they're sort of traveling all together. Mm -hmm. That part of the game. Instead of going for Baron Nash, we're going for Dragon first. Wait. Oh dear. I think our uh, screen froze up again. Uh. Hang on there, Logan. Hardly anything. Awesome. Huh. What? Hot. And up their sleep. Well, they may have just figured that it's more important to get the Baron for a long-term gain. Gain of team. And that would probably take up an awful lot of. Mm -hmm. so they may feel Baron canary was just better use of their. Gets the blue buff. So thanks to that, uh, we're now just team rolling for all the buff on. Yeah, well, at this level, it doesn't take long to kill them, so uh -huh. you just kind of show up, hang out for about 10, 15 seconds, and you're done. And Gunk playing top with the super minions, kind of pulling Tread out there. And he's he's getting the they're getting the better of him, but it was because they teamed up four on one against him. Yeah. So it's impressive that he was able to last as long as he did. Yeah, he's a little higher level, but man, to be able to stand up against four of them like that. That's top laner tank for you. Yep. After Claw, man, he uh, he did die there, but it was only after they came with an eyelash and killing him twice. Bro was slaying even while holding on by a thread. Yep. The beautiful thing to see. And getting very deep into enemy territory here. Alex, we're really punched. Yep. This might be it. This might be ball game. Frisbee dealing out a lot of damage. Yep. GG's. That's it, guys. Woo! Yep, game. Let's go. Good stuff. Good stuff. All right, so, uh, Andrew, on that game, what were really the keys to victory on that one, do you think? Hmm. I think it was, like, that one one or two team kills we got. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Definitely uh, Mr. Gunk, like, really coming out on top, like, complete uh, surprise turnover. Uh, he cleared the whole team that was on Dragon uh, and secured it for himself. That that was really a uh, really big surprise and a huge turning point. Yeah, I think that that kind of was the turning point. Uh, you can look back, and there's always uh, different parts of the game that you look at, and you're like, maybe if this had happened different, the outcome would have been different. I think that, uh, and credit to Vermont Tech for playing an extremely good and extremely close game for most of it. Uh, to their credit, they did very well, but at the same time, you know they've got to be kicking themselves at that. It's like, man, if that team fight had just gone a little different mm -hmm. and we had been able to get Gunk down, we may have been able to uh, really make a difference here. So. They got gunk. Yeah, got gunk. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick break here, and then we're going to be back with a post-game interview here in just a minute. Yep, thanks for joining us, guys. Did you know that 100% of Faulkner's computer science graduates since 2014 have found jobs in their fields within six months of graduating? It's a great time to be a computer scientist. Everyone is walking around with a computer in their pocket in the form of a smartphone. 
and it takes software developers to make those things work. I built church websites and through the training and instruction that I received from Faulkner, I was able to go right into my career after graduation. It laid a solid foundation for what you need to know. Um, I'm getting a lot of hands-on experience within my field and also they're just giving me a wide variety of options of things that I might want to pursue in the future. In the state of Alabama alone, there are over 4,000 tech-related jobs available. And the preparation that you receive at Faulkner University will allow you to go to work almost anywhere as a software developer. It's a great time to be a Faulkner Eagle, and it's a great time to be a computer scientist. I hope you'll come and join us. leaders for the river oh yeah you gotta hold it sorry about that yeah so we're we're live and uh we're back on the air here with a big faulkner victory to go to the championship game in league of legends very proud of the guys tonight and here we have stephen patterson also known as methodical melody so he's going to be doing our post-game interview you got to feel good about this you're going to the championship Stressed, but good, yes. <laughs> well, hopefully uh, we can fix some of that before we get there. <laughs> you, you've got two weeks to digest and prepare for it, because the next scheduled game, I believe, is two weeks from today. So it'll be after Thanksgiving break. Yep. All right, so there were a couple things that happened in that game and came out really strong in the first one. Kind of got to roll them pretty quickly, and then had some real problems in the second, and then came out in the third. What was the uh, the energy like in the room, and how were you guys? Uh, third round. Um, honestly, I'm not totally sure how we did it, but it's just sometimes you got to believe in yourself. Sometimes you actually end up doing what you believe you can. Most of it was Zane. I'm gonna just fully admit. That. Zane did have an excellent game. <laughs> I mean, Zane... He did. He, even the round that y'all lost, he did pretty well in. Really did. One of the things in League is just sometimes you've got to let yourself get carried by the best person on the team. <laughs> and sometimes they're just having a really good day. Well, they did have a good day. There was uh, one point where you were actually acting as his support, weren't you? A bit, yeah. Yeah. Just so... trying to keep people off of him. Right. <laughs> Well, it, uh, it, that was in that second game where they realized if they could take him out, they basically God bet him. So yeah, dominoes. Uh, Zane was able to squeak out a clutch win there in uh, the like the early parts of the the third game. It just started snowballing to where you guys were kind of unstoppable. Yeah, he just got a lead and kept the snowball growing down a hill, if that makes any sense. Yeah. So one of the things I wanted to ask about, especially with, uh, with the strategy and, and what y'all did, y'all did something that we've seen you do in uh, one match previous to this, which is all of a sudden in the third, and it seemed like this was a really effective strategy, 
you actually switched places, and you and Frisbee went on top lane. Zane went on bottom lane, and after that, everybody was just mixed up, and nobody knew where anybody was. So was that something that y'all did reactionary, or was that the strategy from the start? Um, it's kind of reactionary. It depends on who usually... Usually it's mid lane that we switch with, because they're the one who usually wins lane, and the first tower gets destroyed there. Uh-huh. It's a lot safer to farm in a lane where you don't have an enemy tower, but you have... Because you can fall back much quicker than they can. Mm-hmm. And you're a lot safer than they are. Right. So you could have a teammate coming up behind them, feed yourself a kill, but they can't fall back to the tower. So this time Zane got the first tower, and we were like, you can handle these two guys. Let's just go up there and keep getting gold safely. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't think this Orn can kill us. Well, that strategy worked really well for you, and you were able to get a lot of... Uh, get the gold advantage, get the kills advantage, and after that, you were just able to... Uh, you did come close on one of the... I believe it was one of the dragons after that, but every other fight that you had with one of the uh, the big monsters in the jungle, you took them all out pretty easily and didn't have to worry much about steals. Yeah, a lot of that was due to Zane pretty much bodyguarding it because mm-hmm. they know they can't step up to him. And a lot of our champions are very good at taking monsters quickly just due to how designed. I did notice that they seemed a, a little bit worried about, because they banned, um, I hope I'm getting the name right, what's the one you play? The pizza? Siver. Yeah, Siver, Siver. I was thinking Sylvia, and I was like, I can't do it. I noticed that they banned her for the third match, so why did you decide to go with the, the champion that you eventually chose for the third? Because they have a lot of tank. Mm-hmm. And some characters can't deal with tank at all. Right. Kaisa is one of the few that excels. She's very short range, and she does a lot of damage to get up close. The problem with her is that a lot of the time, it's hard to get up close. Mm-hmm. But with their team, it they're coming to you. So right. it's pretty much easy to just let them walk into the shredder, let the shredder do the work. But in this case, it didn't end up being necessary since they existed right. the way he did. <laughs> well, to be fair, too, it seemed like the synergy between you and Charlie, who was playing Nautical, did very well in that third round. It was better, yeah. So, uh, one last thing that I'll ask before we close out here tonight. Uh, are there any plans for the group to get together and work during the Thanksgiving break? Like, what are y'all going to do to just basically stay sharp? I am more than willing to say that we will probably have more than a few matches to break our next game. Because, as far as I'm aware, we all have ways to practice, even with us going all across the country. Yep. <laughs> I'm going to Virginia. I'm right. sure everybody else is going home. Yep. <laughs> this team is very spread out, uh, but that's good to hear. And uh, I got to say, you know, did you think that the first year that we have a League of Legends team, we would be playing for the title? <laughs> no. I certainly didn't, and I'm the coach. And I, I mean, don't get me wrong, I was going, that was the goal. But I didn't think that we would be playing for the championship our first year having a team. And uh, it really is a testament to how hard you guys have worked and how Daniel has pulled this team together. He has done quite a bit to that. Because mm-hmm. you know I haven't helped you all that much when it comes to, I mean, oh, I you can don't play the game. I help, right, I help with management, but uh, when it comes to actually playing the game, you guys have, have really kind of done that on your own, and I commend you all for being able to pull that off. A lot of that is Daniel and Dane knowing. Yeah. Well, I mean, don't sell yourself short, though. You're one of the most experienced players on the team as well. You've got the most play out, I think. Uh, other than Daniel. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. So we're looking forward to seeing you guys play in the championship, and hopefully we can bring one home for uh, the Eagles. Hopefully. It'll be a team we were already against, though. Uh, yes, it'll be Cynic. Ah. Uh, very tough team. Played very well the first. There will be some changes to the game itself, though. The preseason is starting tomorrow, which brings a bunch of new items, different changes to the game. So it might actually be a different game that we're playing. Well, that's uh, one of the things about esports. It's not like uh, in the middle of the season that uh, baseball changes. Yeah. So, uh, that is something that is kind of unique to this particular style of game. But it sounds like you guys are, are confident and ready to roll, and uh, I'd love to see you guys take home a, a W and a championship your first year. Hopefully we can make that happen. 
Uh, so that's Stephen Patterson. Thank you so much for being with us. Uh, Mr. Or sorry, I always almost called you Mr. One Shot. <laughs> <laughs> Methodical Melody will be back with us uh, on Tuesday to play for the title, and we certainly look forward to that. We're going to go ahead and call it a night here. Thank you so much for being with us for a late night legend match. And uh, we do have another broadcast that is going to be coming up before too long. That's going to be League of Legends is going to be the next one, which will happen after Thanksgiving break. So this is our last broadcast before the Thanksgiving break. We will be gone for two weeks. Uh, but on the 28th, we'll be back for the championship game of, Le- game of League of Legends. Or sorry, Rocket League. And then the very next night on that Tuesday, again at 6 p.m., we're going to be playing for the championship for League of Legends. So be sure to watch those. Don't miss the playoff action that we've got going on here at Faulkner. And uh, we'll be playing first Simpson for Rocket League and then Seneca for the championship for League of Legends. So that's it with a final score of 2-1. to one. Faulkner comes out victorious against the, Ver- uh, the Vermont Tech Knights. So that's going to be it for uh, everybody here at Faulkner and the Faulkner Esports team. A special thanks to my broadcast partner, Andrew Greet, who stepped up and came in last minute and was able to fill in uh, because we didn't have another commentator and able to uh, do that and did an excellent job of that. Special thanks to Logan Clark, who had never done a League of Legends game before tonight, but did an excellent job of making sure we stayed on the air. And, of course, Stephen Patterson doing our post-game interview. I'm Caleb Cockwood. We'll be back on Monday after Thanksgiving. Stay the course, friends. The preceding broadcast was an official presentation of Faulkner University. It may not be redistributed without the express written consent of the Faulkner University Athletic Department. Regitar USA High Res Arena is sponsored by Regitar USA. The national anthem was performed by the Faulkner University Chorus. If you would like to learn more about the Faulkner Esports program, visit our official website at FaulknerEagles.com or follow us on Discord, Facebook, Twitter, Twitch, and Instagram for all the latest news and events. Thank you for watching, and soar Eagles!